All right, so let us see how um, a Hunter Avalon stacks up against libertarian debates. So the higher the tip, the closer they're to the... Oh, stop it. Of, of, oh, yeah, they're uh, not yeah. going to try to talk to me, are they? What do you mean? The masseuse. They're not going to, like, try to, like, chit-chat the whole time. Like, so what do you do for work? Dude, it's, it's not like a hairdresser where, like, they won't shut the fuck up. Like, I mean, you could get that person, but that's not a person that does well. Especially with massages, a lot of them know, like, people don't want to be talked to. Like, they'll, they'll feel you out. And if you're, like, a chit-chatter, they might talk with you a little bit. But, like, if you're not a chit-chatter, it'll, it'll be silent. Nice. The equational question. Reality that it, the wealth, wealthier people get better quality things, but I don't think that's an injustice. It's not an injustice when you say better quality things. It is an injustice if the better sure. quality thing that you're talking about is medical care, education, no, 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 and no. police protection. I don't. Oh, okay. So it's an injustice now. Like, this is his own of the libertarian right in the beginning from the debate is to say that it's an injustice for rich people to get better quality care. So, what you're saying is rich people can't go to the hospital and, like, Get bottles of Perrier given to them if they want to. Like, you know what I mean? Like they can't have a better experience. They can't have better doctors that they're that are exceedingly rare. So that doctor just has to be shipped around the country. Like we have to force really, really good surgeons to like be shipped around the country. And every heart surgery has to be like, like they have to they have to rank in order of severity and then like the the highest the 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 best heart cardiologist has to be like has to fly to Texas for like some random person because they're the worst off and like we gotta like we gotta we gotta have private jets for it to make sure they get there in time like the fuck are you talking about? I don't think there's anything magical about uh, healthcare or police protection or anything. Whatever field you're talking about, if you're wealthier, you're going to be able to afford better quality. According to your worldview. Wealthy people would be able to fund their own police stations more adequately, thus resulting in faster police responses and better overall police protection. Yes. Uh-huh. You really connected A to B there. Right. Which, well, like, what, what's, what's wrong with that? In fact, that even, that doesn't seem just logical from, like, that's not only logical from the stance of, like, the market and the ability to do those things, which by the way, that means that that police agency is able to get more money. And because they get more money, not only are they affording better care, but it also likely means that they have money for like to spurn on the business of innovation and policing, which would thus mean better things are invented for those systems, which means the poorer systems get better too as things get available on the market, right? Like if you had a free market of policing and there was like uber wealthy people that spent a lot of money on their policing, we might have more development in things like <clears throat> stun guns that are less likely to kill people or like better net guns or like better, better, just better technology to take people down and by non-lethal means. And then once those things are produced, eventually other people figure out how to produce those things. And then somebody figures out how to make them cheaply. And then everyone has access to less lethal means of subduing subjects, which means police brutality rates go down everywhere because the market was allowed to innovate. So that's awesome, morally good, and great. And the third thing is um, they have more property value. Of course, it makes sense that they need better policing and protection because they have more shit to steal or burn or destroy this is all oh, this if these are his owns which are just appeals to emotion and not like an argument about the, like the causal effects from a consequentialist perspective right like he's not like i understand him not stepping into like what is and isn't morally justified but like he's not even talking about outcomes really he's just saying he's doing like really low level analysis of outcomes and then saying Ma bad because it sounds bad. Jesus Christ, Hunter Elvalon is so fucking low IQ. This is going to be hilarious.
they would have better yeah, police that, protection. That's true, of that's true of anything. They can afford better restaurants. They can afford better, better restaurants. Don't matter. That's not a life or death kind of situation. The way that calling the police, if you're in the case of a fucking murder, is. That's why everyone would have at least a baseline level of police. And How are they going to have? A, okay, that, I'm going to make you answer this question. How are they going to have a baseline if you're not doing taxation? Because if they don't, they can't. What? If, if you don't have a baseline of protection of any form whatsoever, then you have to defend your property yourself. I don't know. Maybe stealing 40 to 52% of all of the wealth will like spurn the economy on in such a way that people can afford basic policing and protections like mutual aid. Like there's, there's a ton of different ways that they can be done. What's the baseline of protection now though? I'll tell you what it's in like neighborhood in watch. Right. I've, I'll tell you as someone who's actually lived in the projects and has lived in and has lived, you know, at, at an older age, lived in neighborhoods where the police, um, where, where crime is really high. Um, I have called the police. Well, I should say my father has called the police, but we have called the police because of gunshots and been told by the police we will send someone out to investigate in the morning that neighborhood's too dangerous. We don't go to that neighborhood at night. That's what baseline protection for poor communities is. No constitutional duty to protect, and they don't even need to show up to your fucking neighborhood. They let you get murdered because crime's too high in your area. That's what baseline looks like in America now, Hunter Avalon. Fuck you talking about. But they pay taxes. I mean, let's be honest, pretty much everybody in that neighborhood is absorbing more taxes than they pay, but you know, somebody pays taxes. <clears throat> Um, you, you had made a comment very early in the show before you, I love, I love how Hunter Avalon's logo has a rose in it. Just to let you know, right off the bat that he's a commie, oh, I almost said the R word is a commie idiot. Just in case you're curious, he'll let you know right off the bat. You even started the Crowder clip. You said you were a capitalist, but you're also a social Democrat. I think the capitalist part was in reference to the fact that you, you somehow monetize your content. But um, anyway, I... I... <laughs> yeah. oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> All right. I thought this libertarian was just going to be some random idiot, and he still could be. I, I don't know. But, like, right off the bat, that's a beautiful way to introduce. You said you're a capitalist. I, I, I guess it was in reference to the fact that you sometimes monetize your content. Like, he snuck in his hypocrisy right in the fucking very beginning. And that was really good. I got to give it to him. That's something Mark says all the time. He's like, Oh, they're a fucking socialist, but you know, there's, there's nobody. What do you, what do you usually say about these socialist uh, streamers? There's no one more capitalist on Twitch than socialist streamers. <laughs> right. It's just like, Oh fuck. That's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> I just want to let you know, we can see his chat. And if I see any of you fuckers, in chat, in this chat, calling you out, all right? I'm calling you out. And what I'm going to say is, you fucking monster, you fucking piece of shit, I'm so proud of you for getting your news, your information, your entertainment from multiple different sources, and uh, I'm happy that you do that and that you don't live in an echo chamber. But also, well, I'll never trust you. You do. I'll never trust you. <laughs> that just caught my attention because I think capitalism is actually not consistent with being a Democrat. The way I think of capitalism is that it's in favor of a uh, freedom, to put it very simply, which I think entails no taxes. So taxes coerce people. Uh, it's a coercive way of getting revenue for the government. But uh, if you... Uh, you favor taxes, then you're you're violating people's freedom, which I think is a I would actually argue violation of capitalism. I think that it's my worldview that allows more freedom, because what you have okay. is a. All right, cool. We get it. Positive freedom. Um, we get that. Um, one hundred and one chill bullshit. But yeah, capitalism is is describing a free market. You can't have taxes and have capitalism. What you have is a mixed economy that's capitalistic, because it has. The, the, the government affords 
some level of private property rights and protection. Right? That's not capitalism. A society in a way. I think that it's my worldview that allows more freedom because what you have okay. is a, a society in which people are able to get health care and people are able to work a job in which they're making adequate money that they can survive and live comfortably. You have less freedom if you're sick or if you're dying or if you're poor. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, again, th th this idea about freedom is this really childish notion that freedom is synonymous with choice, right? And so that that's really... What, it, what positive freedom boils down to, right? So positive rights, for example, would be like, you know, the right to housing, the right to food, the right to healthcare, et cetera. But the thing is, is that like more choice is kind of what they believe. So you have, you have more elements that you're able to choose from because your basic necessities are met. The problem is, is that your instantiation of expanding choice requires less choice and less freedom from other people. Right. So it's just it it doesn't you can't have a freedom that curtails another freedom and call that freedom. Well, I guess you could, but you can't have rights. Right. You can't have rights that violate other rights because you're stopped. Right. Yeah. Like you, you're stopped from being able to um, to being able to argue logically for those rights because you're a violator of other rights. And so the only way that you can logically argue for rights in general is once you stop being a criminal for the right, for the positive rights, um, or sorry, against the negative rights. So, you know, if I, if I advocate taxation or like, let's say I'm the tax collector and I take taxes, I can't say I'm increasing freedom because I logically can't talk about freedom at all until I fix the criminal issue. That is me. Um, that is me engaging in the theft to begin with. It's the same thing with healthcare, right? If you, if you force a doctor to work in a system, you coerce other individuals, how it is, what it is they can and can't do and, and take away their right to voluntary association and you aggress upon them. You can't say that you're expanding freedom. You can't even logically argue for the expansion of that supposed freedom until you no longer are a criminal for the things that you supported, which is the violation of their rights to their body and their labor and their property. It, it doesn't make any logical sense. What it really is, is it says, I'm a consequentialist. I have a subjective bias, or as Mark says, your preferences for certain things. And I think things would be better from a consequentialist framework if we do this. And then of course, how you weaponize your subjective bias is when the dialectic comes in. And, and the dialectic is the way in which many of these radical leftist ideologies kind of poison the well and take over. And, and that's how you see that subjective frame of the consequentialists be poisoned in such a way where they advocate for many, many horrible things. You have less freedom in those cases. Taxation is a necessary part of living in a society. We all share this space. This motherfucker really did the we live in a society and that's why taxation is necessary argument. Like this is... This is elementary school shit. How many fucking views does this video have? 9,000? It was 550,000 followers? Ugh. Ugh. How long has it been out? September 29th. Is that not a good ratio? Yeah, 9,000 to 550,000 subscribers is pretty rough, considering that we get like 100 on our worst and, and close to 8,000 on our best. And we have less than a thousand subscribers, thousand. right? So he's got 550 times more subscribers than us. That's, that's pretty rough. So obviously the performance, this video didn't do that well. Actually, let me, before I say that, let me, let me look at his, his, um, his other videos, like see what he, see what, he, how he averages out. Cause we get anywhere from like a hundred to 500 normally with some breaking out into the thousands and a couple like 5,000, 8,000, um, 4k, 8k, 9k, 14k, 10k, 8k, 6k, or sorry, seven, seven, four, four on a short's pretty rough, actually 13, nine, seven, four, 13. So this is actually pretty average for him. Yeah. This, this, this is rough. Hmm? Uh, donkey said they banned Nick R. Is that 
I don't know who Nick R is. Probably Nick Ricada. Can you, yeah, can you, um, can you say things that, that other people can interpret? Because I, I'm, I'm guessing he's saying Ricada Law, but. Oh, he's banned on YouTube? Yeah. I mean, Keffels does work. If Keffels wants someone gone, you're gone. You're not allowed to upset the trans rights activists without getting banned. Now, whether or not he gets his account back is kind of, it is what it is. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, you get mass reported and YouTube um, supports the current thing. And, you know, Keffels is a horrendous narcissist that belongs in prison for her, for her, probably for her fraud that she committed, her, um, for her, um, you know, supposed ongoing legal things. Um, I'd say she belongs in jail for that. She belongs in jail for, you know, funneling hormone replace bathtub hormone replacement therapy to children. I would without parental consent, um, and helping that, um, everything else is like kind of questionable whether or not she did or didn't do it. So like, you know, but I mean, she openly admits the second and the first, she still refuses to show any evidence, but yeah, I mean like this is a person that belongs in jail, but you know, society won't put them in jail because they're a trans rights activist. So they can be as narcissistic and evil as they want. But he might get it back. You never know. He's a pretty big fucking draw, right? And so if he permanently goes over to Rumble, like that's that's bad for fucking YouTube, especially once fucking um once like big court cases happen. Is it's every time there's a big court case, it'll be fucking Rumble with Viva Fry and 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 Robert Barnes and Ricada Law, like everyone that wants a slightly right wing um, take on what's going on in court stuff and big legal cases is going to permanently be on rumble if they don't give him his account back. Right. Like you might have some people watching legal, legal and shit like that on YouTube, but like every major trial, YouTube's going to lose massive amounts of views to rumble and people are going to discover other YouTubers on rumble. So, I mean, honestly, YouTube either, either better straighten up and fly, right. Or you just gave a giant fucking W to Ricade is too big at this point to just lose a majority of his audience, right? Like they're going to follow him to rumble. And then they're going to turn notifications on for rumble because they're watching YouTube, but they want to know when Ricade law goes live on rumble. And what does that mean? Every time they follow someone on rumble, they're going to get notifications for those channels. Well, that's what I'm saying. Legal Eagle is like a, a lefty space. So like, they're not going to, you know, lefties aren't going to go follow to see what the other side is saying. Because they're confident they already know. Yeah, Keffel's, Keffel's crew and got him banned off of um, Twitter a couple days ago, I think. But I think a lot of these people might be coming back with Elon Musk confirming that he's bought what he was always going to do, which is buy Twitter. But yeah, let's get back into um, brain dead takes with... Um, with um, Hunter Avalon. We have to be able to put something in collectively if we expect the government to benefit, uh, benefit us in any way. And so paying taxes in order to have health care for everybody. Well, you don't actually need to expect the state to give you a benefit. Like you could actually like, <clears throat> what is it that um, Deb Philman says? She says, I don't want I don't want free. I want freedom. It's such a good line. It's such a hard line. I don't want free. I want freedom. And it's so true. Like, dog, I don't want free. I want freedom. Like, fuck out of here with your free shit. Anyway. And so paying taxes in order to have health care for everybody, in order to um, have stronger unions, in order to, I mean, ideally, I would like a UBI at some point even, or UBI or something like that. This, if anything, allows for more freedom. I would be okay paying more in taxes if it also meant that I would be saving money when I go to the doctor. Okay. So I think Well that's that's not how that happens because you don't save money with socialized healthcare. You spend more. We likely have different definitions of freedom. So maybe we could talk about that. The the way I understand freedom is the I understand it as being the absence of coercion. 
if you were forcing somebody, meaning physically forcing them, like or threatening to use force against them, like with a gun, or threatening to haul them off to jail, then that would be a violation of someone's freedom. Well, not necessarily consider- because. You know what's really fucking sneaky about this? Like, really actually fucking slimy of Hunter? What's that? I don't know if the guy gives an outro, because we just started, but didn't put the guy's name in the title, didn't put the guy's name or links in the description, and starts it off presumably after he's introduced himself. So it's edited that it's just some libertarian that I'm wrecking. Mm-hmm. So if someone's interested in this guy, they can't find out who it is unless he keeps an outro in. We'll see. We'll see if he keeps the outro in, but if he, but if he cuts out an outro, then this is just a nameless fucking libertarian that he refuses to give any acknowledgement to. And that's fucking gross. dude. I mean, like, you don't have to. It's your channel. Do what you want. But, like, it just goes to show that, like, that you're afraid any... Right. He doesn't do that with anyone. Hunter does these for the clout. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, boys. Most Twitch streamers are in it purely for the clout. Most YouTubers are in it purely for the clout. I'm in it for the money. most, (laughs) Most Twitter people that are, like, Twitter famous are in it purely for the clout. And I, I'm not going to name names or anything, but like I know things about certain people and I've had DMs with certain people where I'm just like, oh, wow, you're just a fucking clout demon. Okay. Right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to burn bridges by like attacking people and like releasing the DMs just because they're in it for the clout. I think it's a stupid way to go after people because like it's a business and if you present good shit, I don't really care if you're in it for the clout. But... This one is like is a little bit egregious. That you don't at the very least like share the dude's name and link. You know, like if we upload this to YouTube, like I'll put Hunter Avalon's name. Everyone will know it's Hunter Avalon. Why wouldn't I? I wouldn't like n- cover up his face and be like listening to some guy. You know what I mean? Like it would just be weird. And like he doesn't even show his Twitter thing or his Discord or anything, right? So you can see the guy's logo and his name underneath. Like every bit of information is 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 just kind of like hidden. Officers Willie Johnson and Herman Clark, for example, drove to the heart of the Fillmore district. Now what's my name? Willie Johnson. And why is my name? Willie Johnson. Because you're swimming in bitches. You goddamn right. Oh, you're really proud of this new jail. Then it's not about proud. I just want to talk during it if I notice it because the shit gets missed. All right, let's continue. And that would be a violation of someone's freedom. Well, not necessarily consider- because we have, again, more freedom by paying taxes. So because I'm paying taxes, that means the police are funded. That means the fire department is funded. That gives me more freedom from having my shit stolen or my house burned down. I, I don't think. Your shit stolen or your house burned down. Have you ever heard about no-knock warrants? Have you ever heard about civil asset forfeiture? Have you ever heard about imminent domain? No, that does not keep your shit from getting stolen or your house burned down. Presumably, it keeps your house from getting burned down more so than causes, but not better than a private system. I think, well, for one thing, I don't think you need to uh, coerce people in order to fund the police. Like, I think it's in my rational self interest to fund the police. So, I, and I think many other people, would be voluntarily willing to fund the police. So that I'm protected wrong. from criminals. Why, why would you expect people to just voluntarily do this? I mean, look at the way that corporations have acted in, in the past. Unless there is some kind of a government regulation put on top of them, they will cut every corner in the book in order to save money. Isn't this why we just have... What are you talking about? It's in, it's in the corporation's best interest to protect their assets, which means they'll have police for themselves. Oh, but the, the individual wouldn't have police, and that's why it'll be wrong, right? That's the, fo- the follow-up. Well, it's also in the individual's self-interest to do the same. A community police situation. Everybody chips in in an HOA, right? Nice neighborhoods. They're going to want to do that. Okay, but what about the poor neighborhoods? Okay, well, guess what? Poor neighborhoods are almost exclusively done by those evil landlords. And you know what? Landlords don't want a bunch of fucking crime because it reduces the property value and it causes property damage. So it's in the landlords in the poor areas, best interests. Like the, 
Okay, so what about lower middle class? Now we're talking about lower middle class individuals that 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 it's in their self interest, but maybe they don't quite have enough money. Again, that's where mutual aid comes in. That's where it's in everyone's rational interest to do these things. Rights enforcement agencies, and if you're not having your money stolen. What lower middle class is is a lot different than what middle lower middle class is today. When you have hyperinflation, property taxes, property taxes on your vehicle, sales taxes, you have taxes on, um, you have income taxes, you have taxes on on you know um, inheritance tax, you have a tax on nearly fucking everything. Like this is dumb had that problem with the the uh, forest fires wasn't it because one of these massive energy um, grid companies weren't abiding by certain standards because it was saving them money right which is why you sue them for shit like that like nobody's advocating that like the corporations just run free like nobody's advocating that like things will be perfect and also you just proved that state regulation enforcement was insufficient and these things occurred despite the state and taxes. Hey, here's an example of, of how corporations are evil and they'll do things because, because without regulations. Also, we had these regulations and they weren't following them. What the fuck are you talking about? You fucking dunce. Uh, well, hold on. Let's, I think, you, why would people do it? I mean, it's it's in myself. No, not two hours later, all right? We're like a little bit in. We're, we're five minutes in. We'll get through it, boys. Interest. We can just take me, for instance. It's in my self-interest to be protected from criminals, so I'm going to donate some money to the police. Well, what if other people think it's in their self-interest to be protected from criminals, but they don't have the money to donate to police? Well, I don't think it's necessary that everyone donates. I mean, people can donate at different amounts. You could have billionaires donating. You could have... Millionaires you realize this would be less, have... again, less freedom because then you would see the, the type of police protection unbalanced. The wealthy, since they're able to put more money in, would have a much stronger police. Perfectly balanced now. Right, right. Again, like wealthy neighborhoods have, have an unbalanced police system, as do poor neighborhoods. Also, like... like well, to be fair, I'm sure Hunter doesn't advocate for the current system that much. Right. I, you know, like I, I want... This is what I want. I want Hunter Avalon to do a little social experiment with me. Okay. Since the police force is so balanced and great. Okay. What, what I'm going to do, right. Is first, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Beverly Hills. Okay. Hunter Avalon. And then I'm going to staple a hundred dollar bill to your back pocket. And I want you to walk around with, with nine one one on speed dial in Beverly Hills see how safe you feel okay and then i'm not even gonna pick the worst neighborhood you just come hang out with me in richmond you don't even have to do it alone we'll do the same thing with me in richmond and i want you to walk through mosby court in richmond where there are tire fires and where they look at you and they unironically say what the fuck are you doing here? C word, because apparently I can't say the C word. Are you here to buy crack? If not, get the fuck out. And I want you to have the police on speed dial. And I want you to tell me which place feels safer because of police coming in. Because I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint about Richmond City and Mosby Court. If you, sh I'm in Southside, actually, number 40. <laughs> I'm just on the edge between the gentrified area and the, and the bad area. Um, I'm like, like in the cheap area, but like not quite the bad part of Southside. Uh, but I'm in Southside. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for me, doxing incoming <laughs> little skinny white Antifa kid, let me tr trust you. These aren't your people. Uh, but, um, we're going to go to Mosby court, right? And you can have nine one one on speed dial. And you tell me how quickly before you go, can we please get the fuck out? I don't feel safe in both areas. All right, because I'm going to tell you something when when the police are chasing someone for a minor violation into Mosby court, they turn around, they let them get away with it. If you're near Mosby court and you're speeding and a police officers wants to pull you over, just pull into Mosby court and pull over. They'll leave you the fuck alone because they'll turn around 
because they know cops get killed in Mosby court. That's what they know. Unless they roll in like 10 deep, which they only do to investigate a shooting afterwards. <gasps> Sorry. Well, that is, you know, good to know. I just think it's hilarious that he thinks policing is like this equitable system um, under a state run system, but that like the real injustice is that it would be inequitable under an anarcho capitalist system where all transactions are voluntary. Action unbalanced. The wealthy, since they're able to put more money in, would have a much stronger police force, but the poor, because they can't put as much money in, would have a much weaker police force. Thus, again, less freedom for the people who don't have a lot of money. I think the police, uh, you don't get more police protection by being wealthier, but I think you could get more private security. Would so you not rich, get less police you protection if you weren't donating to your local police? I think you would just get less. See, this is where the libertarian makes a mistake, right? If you're going to engage in the consequentialist analysis, don't fucking pick apart their position in like this nitty gritty kind of like thing that they have a dub on. Bite the bullet and go, yes, that is a moral good. That is a moral good. And then explain how capitalism works and explain how the innovation behind policing makes policing better for everybody, cheaper, more effective, and less violent because the system of capitalism does not have the inherent corruption built in and that the wealthy police officers will have standard I'm sorry, we'll have state-of-the-art technology practices and training and that those are the people that get those things first and they develop those things and eventually those things become cheaper and that innovation of the capitalist system of competition allows for a better policing system and more nonviolent means as we continue. And so, yes, wealthier people would have better police systems and that's awesome and that's amazing and i can't wait for that to happen because i want poor people to be able to have good policing systems instead of the corrupt systems that you fight for you're the person that wants to maintain the status quo of all of the worst atrocities that are committed against the poor in this country and i want them lifted out of poverty and i want them to have freedom and i want them to have safe communities and i can't believe you're such a disgusting individual that you refuse to give those people the rights that they deserve like take the fucking moral high ground you have it you're the one not advocating for aggression and you're the one advocating for capitalism which is a system that is moral is morally just so take it. Right? See? See, Clayton Bigsby? We're now six minutes in. <laughs> but Fabian, innovation means that someone will make a profit. We can't do that. And explain what profit is, right? Just tell them. Profit is the reward that capitalist gets for the necessary production for supplying the nexus necessary capital that is required to make things now, as opposed to things later. And people prefer things now as later and profit is gained via, um, is gained via resource. Uh, it's a reward or a punishment, the lack of profit for proper resource allocation and for the interest on, on the, on the universal time preference. This is a moral good and cap and profit is a moral good and we need it because you can't solve the economic calculation problem. You are the individual that is stealing money and then wasting that money, attempting to determine price instead of allowing the freedom of people to be able and the market to determine price as is necessary. Watch the show APB. Uh, no, what is APB? All points bulletin. I don't understand about a, do a rich dude that buys a police precinct? No, might be interesting. Less uh, private security. You might not be able to afford your own uh, private security guard, but you would still get the baseline sort of police protection that How? everyone gets. How would that be funded without taxes? By voluntary contributions, among and other. What means. I'm saying I mean, is, what if there's a local community that is not making enough money to do voluntary contributions, or if they are, it's not enough to actually uh, lead to adequate police protection for the community. Okay, so first of all, you're talking about some type of, like, where are you talking about, right? So there's this really poor destitute area. Well, the, right? And, and, and so what you're talking about 
when you talk about it, so like, let's really get into this. You're talking about a really poor destitute area where wealthy people don't own the property, right? Because in the inner cities, wealthy people, wealthy or at least middle-class people are, are landlords, right? So the only place where people are really poor and property owners, right, would be places like Appalachia. Now let's look at the policing system in Appalachia where fentanyl overdoses are the worst and where crime is skyrocketing, where police don't come out to protect you and they're basically already protecting themselves. The best way that we can give those people adequate protection is to give them the economic freedom that comes from instead of stealing money from their communities to give them shit policing where people die all the time and literal ginseng wars occur and the police do nothing about it. Give them the economic freedom, stop taxing them to death and allow the morally good system of capitalism to flourish the system so that they can gain the wealth that is needed in order to, to, to go to, to, in order to gain that wealth that is necessary for those protections. In the meantime, they're going to do the same things they do today, which is that they know each other. They engage in mutual aid. They look out for each other. They do community policing. When somebody comes on Farmer John's shit and like steals his ginseng, Farmer John calls up his boys and his boys go and track down who the motherfucker is because the police aren't going to do shit about it because the police fucking suck. So the answer is give them freedom, give them capitalism, and they will actually be able to flourish so that they can afford these services that are vastly superior than the horrible systems that are they're subjected to via coercion today. You ever heard about Murder Mountain? Right? You ever heard about Humboldt County, California and Murder Mountain? Fucking policing system's horrible. It's atrocious. Why do rich people and politicians hire private security if this socialized policing system is adequate for everyone? Shouldn't private security be banned now by his equity logic? Pretty much. Which is why I said we should do a social experiment. Put a $20 bill in his back pocket. Go to Mosby Court or go into uh, Beverly Hills. See which one he likes better. I'd love to know. I'd take him to the rich areas of Richmond. But because the Federal Reserve Building is here and a lot of politicians live in Richmond and lobbyists and corporate lawyers and shit live in Richmond in like one home and then have a DC home, um, we'd probably just get kicked out by the police, <laughs> like if, which would might even make a funnier social experiment is the police are afraid to go to Mosby court. But if we just walked around fucking the rich, super rich neighborhoods of Richmond, the police would come and arrest us for trespassing. That's what would happen is the police will come and actively remove us for, for being in their communities in, in the rich areas. And they will never come to protect us in the poor areas. And if they do come, the first thing you're going to say is what the fuck are you two white boys doing in Mosby court? <laughs> it's, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't you know what time it is here? What time is it? Time to get out of this place. Pretty much. Uh, lead to adequate police protection for the community. Uh, I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't be, I mean, security from criminals is such a key thing. It's like, Almost like I don't know if it's on the level of food, but it's certainly a very fundamental, basic need. So what happens to, to the single a, mother who has to work two jobs just to get by and pay rent and put food on the table every night for? Ah, oh, you said it, rent. What happens to the mom who's renting? Well, she's not a property owner; she is a landlord. The landlord has a vested interest in policing in the community. It is in the landlord's interest that he be the one that says when you pay rent. This is how much rent is. And part of the rental contract is that there is a police agency at the apartment complex or in the neighborhood, et cetera. Why? Because it's not the fucking single mom's property. That's, that's the real value of the property there. It's the home. The landlord has far more property value than the woman who brings her fucking storage shed of bullshit to the house, right? Like the TV, all of the items of the single mom renting, doesn't equal nowhere near as much as the property value of a house or an apartment. So she doesn't need to worry about it. It's in the landlord's best interest. Are you saying the landlord is too poor now? Are we in this destitute dystopian future of poor landlords and poor rich people and everybody's poor? That's not how capitalism works. That's how communism works.
Ari. For her kids. Where, how is she going to donate to the police? I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't see the problem. I mean, if she, uh, if she can, I mean, she's got kids, right? So she, she should, um, first of all, I don't, I don't think every individual has to donate. And so maybe in this case with this mother, she, she finds it more, uh, valuable to put her money elsewhere, maybe just to support her kids. But I don't think that means nobody, the community is going to donate. What if the, the community police? in general is poor? So for, yeah, it's, this guy's floundering. Like you gotta you, listen to anyone that wants to debate anarcho-capitalism or libertarianism. If you are not well-versed in the argumentation about policing and healthcare, right? Don't do it. Because the left will almost all, no matter what the debate topic is, will almost always steer to those two things because those are places where it's easier for them to win on, right? If, if you start saying things about like taxation is theft or any of those basic libertarian ideas, they will eventually lead you to like, look at my debate with a Kano boy, right? He immediately drives it all the way to policing. And the whole debate becomes about policing. Nothing to do with economic theory, despite that being his whole shtick. So if you can't answer questions about healthcare and policing and like, criminal justice system and how that would work. You should not debate anybody that's like worth their salt until you can. These are, you need to have all the arguments ready for that. Yeah. You gotta, you have to be a lot tougher, uh, on, on our side of the aisle. Yeah, for sure. A lot more prepared. Yeah. All right, so the death toll in the Iranian protests is somewhere around 76, last reported. That is why I have painted nails. You can't see this one because it's a green screen and it, it looks black with a black background, but it's green. I painted my nails the Iranian flag colors in support of the protests against veil laws. So if any of you are wondering why I've painted nails, that's it. Is that I'm just showing support that women ought to be able to have the right against religious theocracies that force them to cover their fucking heads and beat the shit out of them and murder them if they don't do it. All right, you heard it, folks. Clip it and ship it. Spread that to the imam. Make him see the error of his ways. No, I'm just fucking... A lot of people don't even like know that it's going on. I really don't. Plus, it was For a fun sure. idea. And we have like a trans fucking panel tomorrow. I thought it'd be funny to have painted nails for tomorrow as well. You do it tomorrow, too. I mean, I'm not going to take them off. <laughs> take them. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do. I mean, what am I going to go fucking start doing plumbing? Like, I'm probably going to maintain this fingernail polish for a day or two, at least. Hey, you know. Paint them yellow and black? Well, no, these are the co it's the color of the Iranian flag. Red, white, and green. For example, right now, like, um, a lot of these minority communities have less than stellar schools because they're funded by property tax. And because they're getting less tax dollars, you have a shittier school. Why would this not be the same thing, just with voluntary donations? When it Maybe it's because the average, the, the amount of money that we spend on schooling, if we were to give all of that money back, two parents would be somewhere between 11,000 to $25,000 per school year per, per school age child. That's how much money we're spending collectively on education. I don't know in the poorest communities in America, if you were a mom of three children, $33,000 is enough to homeschool your kids very well in New York city. $75,000 is a lot of money. Okay. Especially if you get involved in like a homeschool collective. Right. The idea that like that, that, that the only problem is that they're funded off of property taxes and that they're not equitable enough when $4,000 per person is stolen on average every year to fund edu public education systems is insane. 
the collective salary of everyone in the country would go up $4,000. That's a lot of economic interactions. It's it's absurd and ludicrous that the only problem with our education system is that like the property taxes are making it to where poor areas have bad schools. Also, for the record, when you look at per capita funding, a lot of those really bad schools with bad funding, when you actually look at the numbers and the population density, have more funding than other schools. Now, the rural schools do have issues in terms of funding per capita. But like the inner city schools, a lot of these are making more money than the suburb nicer schools. Problem is is that you have crime ridden areas and you have lower IQ individuals in inner city schools, obviously, because they're in bad neighborhoods. And there's two things that fucking the two biggest predictors of success in America is IQ and personality trait, um, personality trait conscientiousness. So, yeah. You have cultures that don't respect education, high crime areas, a lot of fucking, a lot of single parenthood, lower IQ, and magically the schools don't perform well, even if you give them additional funding. So what do we do to actually solve this problem? Stop stealing money and allow capitalism in the market to protect these people and give them freedom so that they can live better lives. It's, it's really fucking simple. When it comes to the police, I uh, I'm not sure I get the uh, the the analogy with schools. I mean, schools. If you're talking about public schools, those are those are tax funded, and I, I think I mean those wouldn't exist. There would be but, private but, schools. But what I'm saying is they're tax funded, yes. But because those communities are poor, they're not paying as much in taxes, which translates to shittier schools. How would this not be exactly the same if we're talking about a police department in which they're supposed to be vol? How would my uni- how would my univariate analysis of a really complex problem not be exactly the same in an anarchist community towards something totally different? No answer. Right? Like, what do you want me to write you a book? Like, how fucking stupid are you to ask such a ridiculous question? I mean, I answered it fairly well, but I mean, like, already here, but like, that's so. It's so dumb. I mean, it's a good tactics question, though, uh, for his to appeal to his audience. And also, if someone's not really ready with the data on that, uh, like you said, they're going to get flustered and flounder and fail. Mm, maybe. Entirely donating to this police. So you're saying they're... The, the school. I'm trying to understand the the, the logic here. The, the schools are poor because the people are poor and can't pay a lot of taxes to support the schools. Yes. And and uh, then the idea is they're also not going to be able to pay for. They're, they're also going to have poor police because they can't afford good police because they're poor. I'm saying that even right now with taxation, we still have a problem with schools not getting adequate funding. So poor communities have shittier schools. What you're saying is let's get rid of taxation altogether and instead leave this up to voluntary donations. Why do you think that voluntary donations would lead to a better outcome for that poor community if even right now when there's mandated taxation, they're not giving enough taxes to adequately fund the school? Because they wouldn't have massive amounts of their wealth stolen because you'd be engaged in voluntary transactions as opposed to underfunded shitty state systems that are doing more harm, like the police are literally doing more harm than good in like these areas. Like, honestly, like they over police them for the drug war. They separate fathers, put them in jail. They fucking, the war on drugs has been a dismal fucking failure. Like they're they're The way that they fight crime leads to the instantiation and the repetitive cycle of more fucking crime. So yeah, the voluntary system would be so much better for these people. That's why it would be better. These people would have more power, more wealth. And property owners that like that rent in these areas would have a vested interest in a police force that protects their assets and doesn't do weird fucking shit like no knock fucking warrants and like sitting at the corner causing prop. They don't have a vested interest in a shitty police state. Like, that's not what they're interested in. 
Their interest is in protecting their own property. It's not, and it's not that difficult to understand. I don't think the, the, the um, well, there's, I think there's a lot going on here. One thing is, I, I'm not sure money, a lack of money is the problem with uh, low quality schooling. I, uh, or at least I, I don't know that it's the main problem. I think it could. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, this is good to like kind of call it out. It needs to be a little more aggressive, but um, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a cup of water. I'll be right back. Oh yeah. All right, Chad. It's just us again. How strange do you think I can make it in the minute it will take him to do whatever it is he said he was doing? No, I won't make it weird. I, uh... Yeah, I don't know. This is going well, I guess. Right? I could I could talk about this topic, but that's, uh... That's kind of your field, man. Uh, I'm not interested in being clipped on YouTube saying something stupid. I want I want the money, not the fame. Pussy. Eh, call it what you will. All right, let's continue. Sorry about that, boys. It's just like getting sick with the changing of the seasons. I got to make sure I maintain my water intake. How much do those brand new CRT textbooks cost? <laughs> Could be um, partly the, the 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 teaching quality because maybe the, they can't uh, afford to pay teachers adequate. Funds. Well, I, I think a lot of teachers <laughs> don't know very well how to teach. I think there's a large a lot of problems with the pedagogy in America, um, That's the bad. sort of contents and methodology of teaching. I think there are severe problems in those areas where even if you throw money at them. Uh, that's not going to fix the the knowledge deficit, which I think is leading to a well, lot, a lot of, of it is also it. because of poverty too. Like it doesn't, for example, allow for the same resources so that you're not able to study as much at home or you're not able to get as much done at home in order to achieve a better education. This oftentimes stems from poverty specifically. I mean, yeah, but how are you going to fix poverty? Your war on poverty is a dismal fucking failure. The state doesn't fix poverty because Agencies that are in charge of fixing poverty have a vested interest in maintaining poverty. Like they just give government handouts and then say that that's going to magically fix it. Except we've been doing that for over a hundred years and it's never worked. Lo and behold, when you fuck up the market's incentive structures and you just give people money, it becomes a permanent band aid that does nothing to actually address the issues. That's why you need economic freedom in these areas. Like social security hasn't fixed anything. Like there's still tons of problems with the elderly. You know what I'm like it's, it's a problem with our culture that you attempted to fix with social security. And they said, look, there's left, there's less elderly poverty now than there was previously but the previously was under the problem so you put a band-aid on the problem but what is the cost to the rest of society with a net loss in gdp economic transactions how much innovation was lost how much how many other communities were not helped because of all of the stolen money taken out of the economy in order to support the ponzi scheme that is Social Security. No, what you did is you stole a bunch of money and then you gave all that money to a specific population and then you tracked the before and after of that specific population and you said, no, oh, well, after that, that population is doing better by the metrics that we chose to look at. Isn't that great? Social Security fixed the fucking problem. And it's like, no, the problem was a culture of industrialization an adoption of the nuclear family and a lack of taking care of your parents, a breakdown of those family ties from large families that were multi-generational into like two generations in households crammed together in inner cities. And this idea that like you had to save for your retirement. And if you didn't save your retirement, you were fucked unless your kids took care of you. And a lot of kids weren't taking care of their parents. The birth rates went down. So the birth rates went down. 
the culture changed, the housing situations changed, and then the elderly population was fucked. And the way that they solved this was not fixing the population problem. It wasn't fixing the housing situation. And it wasn't about fixing the culture. It was about taking and stealing money from everyone else, putting it into a program that it uses to do all kinds of shit, like fund fund all types of things. And then they'll say, well, technically that money's not taken out of the... Shut the fuck up. We all know it's a Ponzi scheme. I mean, it's not even a justify... It's not even, like I'm not even... We're going to justify that question with an answer. And so you just took money out of the economy and then gave it to another sector of the economy that had a problem. But, and then parts of it are missing along the way, right? Like you had to pay government employees to take the money. You have to pay government employees to manage and staff those offices. You, you, you took all that money and like reintroduced it into the economy in wasteful ways that overspent and, 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 and didn't engage in price, et cetera, that have all types of imbalancing factors in the, in, in an even from an evenly rotating economy perspective cause all types of issues. You just moved money from one place to the other. So you harmed one part of the economy to make one part of the economy better. And you say that that's a win, but you don't know what the harmed portion of the economy would have achieved without your theft. You don't actually know that it's a win. Fantasy solution for old people. Mm. I I don't think the 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 way out of poverty is coercion. I think it's it's freedom. Policy wonkers, one hundred percent correct. Let's be honest, right? He says, I mean, the purpose of social security was never to to help the elderly. It was an incentive for the working population to stop saving and, stimu and stimulate the economy. Very true. One second, one second. Right, right. Oh, you got some kind of DM you don't want us to see? No, I don't have a DM. I was just... When was it established? Oh, let's see. 1937 by FDR, right? I couldn't remember the exact years. I want to get the exact years right. So in 1937, it was established and it was made permanent in 1940, both by FDR during his prime the pump portion. During the Great Depression. Interesting time that it decided to do that. It is convenient. Purpose of the social security system to protect age and disabled person against the expand. Dude, what is this copy and paste bullshit? Like you double copy and pasted some stated purpose. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty abstract statement. But what but you're talking about is less freedom. Well, I think we, we still disagree on what freedom is. So um, I'm not I'm not yet persuaded that it is. I think uh, this sort of system I advocate is actually more free. People will have more opportunities. People will be wealthier, and better off than if people are being coerced. So and coercion is anti prosperity. This occur largely because public school districts in Connecticut and in much of America are. This man is quoting an Atlantic article at this man as his source. Not even saying like, here, here's something like he's just going to start reading from the Atlantic as like a reputable source. This is just leftist journalists circle jerking. Holy shit. This is so bad. This is so bad. You don't like it when people read. Oh God. <laughs> oh fuck. If that's your, if, if, if that's what you got out of what I said, um, I hope no one ever hires you as an attorney because you must have a terrible track record. You're fucking stupid. Are run by local cities and towns and are funded by local property taxes. High They're poverty areas. Right, right. Have lower home values and collect less taxes. And so can't raise as much money as a place like Darien or Greenwich where homes are worth millions of dollars. Right. That, that, yes. A portion of the funding is local property taxes, which means that poorer areas end up 
with less money than do wealthier areas. This is absolutely true. 110% true. But that's not the only way schools are funded. Like, there's like something over like $700 million from the federal government each year, or $700 billion from the federal government each year towards education. Like, there's a lot of different types of education systems. There's also the lottery system in almost every single state goes towards education, which disproportionately taxes the poor, if we're going to be honest. Um, but it's, I mean, but it's not a bad idea per se. It allow, but then again, of course, it allows them to spend and tax money in other areas. So the state is still the state. So there's still problems with that. But like the idea that like, no, nah, but the property taxes, we're going to do this univariate analysis on property taxes. We're going to quote some bullshit from the fucking, from the Atlantic as a means of trying to prove that this is the only way that they're funded with these brain dead takes. And then we're going to use this univariate analysis of education under a state model of taxation to then apply it to anarchistic systems of policing. Like this is so many degrees of like bad logic and separation that it's just laughable. So I, I you're saying it's um, coercion. I don't think it's coercion to pay a degree of taxes to get something. You're getting a benefit here. Yeah, why would I read The Atlantic? I mean, like, I have read The Atlantic before. I usually go to ground.news and then kind of, like, see what the left thinks, see what the right thinks, and then try and, like, parse together the facts. Yeah, but I'm not like an avid reader of the Atlantic, and I certainly wouldn't use the Atlantic as a source for anything. Number one, you should use a primary source if you're gonna make an if you're gonna make some type of argument about fucking or or at the very least like not from a journal not not like a journalistic source, right? I mean, unless like the Times does a study, right? Which happens sometimes, like they'll do a study and they're citing themselves, and then like you're citing the study. If the study doesn't have poor methodology, um, sure, use that. But like the idea that you're just going to take the Atlantic's word for it, like, I'm sorry, but like, if you do that, Fox, I read it monthly. Is that bad? I, I, it sounds like brain rot. Um, if you, if you take Fox or CNN or the, like any legacy media source as like true, you're fucking stupid because they are lying through their teeth to you on a daily basis. All of them are. They have a vested interest in lies of omission. They make false statements all of the fucking time. Like this is a terrible fucking source. The only way that, and, and, and first and foremost, I assume everything is a lie from any of the legacy media, unless they first give a named source and then have a least two other sources. They have two other sources and, and at least one named source. I'm willing to believe that what they're reporting is likely true. If they're not doing that. I just work off the assumption that it's bullshit. Because they're, they have destroyed any ability to trust. Coercion. To so I, I you're saying it's them. coercion. I don't think it's coercion to pay a degree of taxes to get something. <laughs> the fact that you don't know what it means when someone says, okay, Kathy Newman shows what a fucking echo chamber you're in. <laughs> coercion. I don't think it's coercion to pay a degree of taxes to get something. You're getting a benefit here. You're getting. But you know what? Mad respect for not immediately being a pussy and dipping out of the chat and fucking engaging. I'm not going to fucking make this a stream about arguing against you in chat, but, uh, <laughs> but mad respect for that because at least he's stepping out of his echo chamber for a bit. Being a school, you're getting protection from police. You're getting protection from fire. You're paying into something in order to receive a benefit. Society would not be able to function without a degree of taxation. Now we can talk about. The fuck does that even mean? Republico Cospia didn't have taxation. They functioned for 400 years. Do you mean all of American society must have taxation? Yeah, if people don't philosophically change, I could imagine that there are people that wouldn't be able to engage in voluntary associations at this point. This idea that like society can't work without taxation, it's fucking dumb about how much taxation is appropriate or inappropriate but when you're talking about just abolishing taxation and relying on willing donations 
this would not do anything except lead to even greater discrepancies between rich people and poor people as far as education, police protection, etc. That's a bold claim. Can you back it up with anything other than like a few choice sentences from an Atlantic article? Okay, there's, there's a lot going on here. Um, what, one thing you brought up is inequality, which I don't think per se is a bad thing. Uh, just the fact that someone has more money than another person. That's not the problem. Uh, the problem would be that because they have more money, they are able to receive better uh, funding for their schools and they're able to receive better police protection. Okay, but the, the, uh, the fact that you can afford better things if you're wealthier, I don't think is a bad thing. I think that's, uh, yeah, I mean, rich people can afford more. It's not than a bad thing to better. afford nicer things. It's a problem when you are receiving better education and better police protection because you have money, as opposed to people who are not as wealthy, who are now receiving lesser simply because they don't have enough money. No, it's not. That's a morally good thing. I handled this in the intro, though. It's morally good and right that wealthy people get better services. Anyone that argues against that just doesn't understand capitalism. Period. Well, what I'm saying is, like, with something like prote police protection, I, I don't think it is lesser in terms of the police. Now, in terms of private security. <laughs> no, we're talking about his upper lip being kind of sweaty that makes him, like, a predator? That's so fucking weird. Like, some people just sweat, dog. <laughs> yeah, that would be lesser. But there's How would the a, police... A kind of Wait, no, no, hold on. How would a local police station function... What's up, Cuckoo? If they were only relying on donations oh, from the community. That just reminded me of another point. I don't think donations are the only mechanism of funding. It's one method, but there are other. Thank you. <laughs> this idea, that in, like, and don't say donations, say mutual aid. Other mechanisms like lotteries, which have actually been used historically in some places. That's another way of raising money that the state can do. What do you mean there, lotteries? The, the state could run a lottery and sell tickets. And then, you know, that's so encourage the way of raising gambling. Uh, yeah, states do that sometimes. I, I mean, uh, okay. like the you're Colorado basically just like, hey, let's let's get everybody into gambling, and then maybe we can do a yard sale, and then you'll get some good police protection. Really? What's wrong with the yard sale? This is pretty you're ridiculous. This is another. I, I don't. What do you mean this? Like he's. <laughs> what do you mean it's ridiculous? That's one of the ways that you miss that educate that schools are funded when you tried to make up this bullshit that schools are funded solely on fucking property taxes. There you have get they get federal funding, they get state funding, they get lottery funding, like they get grants. Like, what are you talking about? I don't see why it's ridiculous. I, I think historically lotteries have actually been used. It's a it's ridiculous because what you're advocating for, the logical follow through is that wealthy people get a way better education and get better police protection, which only yes. means then that wealthy people are going to continue getting good education, continue being wealthy, and it's going to be a vicious cycle. Then there's going to be a <laughs> hold on hold on only the wealthy get a good education what does that mean right he's not he's not using the word better what he's saying what he's sneaking into this equation is that poor people will be inadequately educated except they're already inadequately educated and a freer system would lead to better education but take that take that aside let's use better Right. Let's be let's be more charitable instead of him sneaking in this bullshit. Yeah, that, that's that's how incentive structures under capital works. If you can't give your children a better future, then a lot of people are not going to work hard. If everyone gets the exact same education, like is he in favor of ab abolishing private schools? Right. Is he in favor of getting rid of all homeschooling is he afraid is he in favor of making sure that no parents are allowed to be parents and that parents can't raise their children because even if you made all of the schools equitable right abolish private school abolish homeschooling made all schools give the exact same education magically right and and somehow tried to balance out inequities by like giving more funding to poor areas etc you would still have children that go home to parents, some of whom are smarter, some of whom are abusive, some of whom are more conscientious. And that's t going to tend to track the wealthier you are. It's going to tend that you're smarter and more conscientious. So you're still going to see disparities. Like 
How are we gonna how are we gonna have this perfect even the playing field? Like it's it's a silly argument to go down unless you don't want people to chip it apart and realize what you're really advocating for is communism. You just want to do communism light. You wanna you wanna use the same arguments that communists use, and then you wanna somehow achieve that with the state, and you wanna do and you wanna stop at a certain point. But that arbitrary point will be voted upon later and later as the society becomes more and more socialist. Like it's, it's, it's what happens when you don't, when you have no philosophical understanding of what it is that you're saying and you have no knowledge of economic theory. Like he's just touting shit he heard or maybe shit he read in the Atlantic and he's just spitting out bullet points and he's, he's fucking empty. He's a fucking airhead with no understanding of the own thing of his own arguments. Like if at least a communist who's wrong has moral prescriptions and a philosophy about how they think economics works. They have arguments. They're bad ones, but they don't match reality, but, but they have them. This guy just has this amorphous collection of ideas that he thinks sound good. It's so bad. Not to mention, if you're richer, you can just get a tutor off the black market. I mean, yeah. Divide, where then you have poor people who are not able to give as much money to their police and to their schools. So you're going to have a generation of poor people leading to the next generation of poor people. It's going to be a vicious cycle. But America benefits when everybody is educated, when everybody has adequate police protection. That's when America truly benefits. What you're talking about right now would actually lead to a, to a world in which it's just the wealthy who are highly educated, going to college, and have police protection. It's absolutely untrue, even if you look at the data, right? Like, homeschooled children do way fucking better. And most people go, oh, well, only the wealthy can homeschool. No, you just have to fucking cut back. You have to make those sacrifices for your children. How much do you value your children? Like... Assuming you're not a single parent, you actually have a stable home. You can have one breadwinner and you can live and you can live within your means and homeschool and work part time. And those homeschool children do way better than public school. Way better. And in fact, they do better than your average private school kid. So it's only the absurdly wealthy and insanely good private schools that actually beat out homeschooling. So again, it's it's not about how much money you have in terms of the quality of your education. That's a factor, but it's not the only fucking factor. Now, if you do what the Mormons do and you set up a homeschool community and you get together with the community and you get together with mutual aid and you recognize that like you're going to work a five day work week. And that means instead of having a full weekend, you're going to take one day off in the week. And then what you do is you get together with five other families of people that you trust and you teach the things that you're better at teaching and that you understand better and you rotate so that one family gets one, one homeschool person, um, takes care of the kids on Monday, the next Tuesday, the next Wednesday, the next Thursday, the next Friday. And you rotate like that you can literally give your kids a great homeschool education while still working a nine to five job that you just take one weekday off and you work a Saturday or a Sunday. It's the, the problem is, is that we have disparate communities and why do we have disparate communities? Because of the culture, because of the industrialization that moved us into the cities. And when these things started to break apart, we begged the state to fix them for us. So they gave us public school. They gave us social security. They gave us food stamps. They gave us TANF, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. They gave us all of these programs, which further increased the issue and did not actually solve the problem, but instead made the problem worse and threw money at it and stole it from other parts of the economy. If you want to fix this thing, then you have to get rid of those welfare problems so the communities are incentivized to get together and engage in mutual aid and praxis to solve these problems, which actually solves the fucking problem. The problem, again, is that we don't, that we, that, that individuals with no fucking money are not living in multi generational families. The problem is the birth rates are too fucking low. The problem is that we crammed ourselves into cities 
and that we and we have no fucking connection to anybody. Or, to put it another way, the problem is that we have developed a state that incentivizes and a culture that maintains high time preference. And it is the state and our sick culture that feed off of each other to maintain that high time preference so that people don't save money. Instead, they give up their money to the government to fix their problems. And now we have a we have a, we have a middle class and a poor that are oppressed so massively by the massive amounts of wealth stolen by the state for the benefit of the rich and the wealthy to maintain systems that destroy our culture and destroy our lives instead of getting rid of the theft and instilling low time preference so that people begin to save again so that people are more frugal so that people understand you should live in multi-generational families so that people can have larger families for a happier long-term life and they can engage in mutual aid and understand what it is that they're who their neighbors are read bowling alone the number one cause of crime the number like the the number one factor in crime the number one factor in poverty the number one factor in, in dropout rates depending on how you measure the data is either a lack of fatherlessness, which doesn't necessarily apply here, but does a little bit because, you know, the state sponsors and incentivizes that via the war on drugs and welfare systems, etc. And the number, the number one, depending on how you measure it another way, is a lack of social capital. We stop going to churches. We stop going to community centers. We stop living together and knowing we were. We put women in the workforce, which is great for some women, but we no longer have like the, the yellow ribbon society. We no longer have, you know, individuals that stay at home that are connected within the community and know what everybody's doing in the neighborhood. Those are the real problems. And we beg daddy government to solve it with money. And the problem is, is that the government, because of the economic calculation problem and because of their lack of incentive structure and care, would rather put band-aids on the problem to get votes and use subjective consequential analysis to say yay we did a thing whilst our culture dies and our poor and our middle class get farther and farther away from the rich and the wealthy and it's disgusting i think that's that's not true I, there would be police protection for everyone what, what i've been saying is that there's additional protection you can get through private security if you're wealthy and yeah that's not going to be the same for everyone but there will be a baseline police protection for everybody. How, of how would there be a baseline police protection for the community that can't afford to donate to the police? Again, over and over again, you keep saying rent. And it's like, dude, if, if, you, if you're mentioning rent, it's the property owners. So again, we need to, we need to change this. You, you need to be more careful and more specific. I think everyone can afford, as a community at least, to donate to a police force. It's, it's, it's so basic a need. It's do, like do you think that maybe like, that you, hey, requiring people willingly, quote unquote, willingly donate in order to ensure that they have somebody to call if they're getting robbed or getting murdered is a level of coercion? Dog, what you're talking about is literally taxes. That's required. It's not required. It, it's not required that you spend money on a rights enforcement agency or police. It's just strongly incentivized because it's a better and cheaper option for you because the market is able to provide that. The requirement is called taxation. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, require? Yeah, that if you're threatening the... Call it's someone no, 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 you're jail. not requiring it. You're not saying I'm going to throw you in jail. What the, the logical follow through, though. No, you literally are. You're saying that. You're saying that I'm going to throw you in jail if you don't spend this money for the police force that we set up for you that has no constitutional duty to protect. And yet... A police force that is in via contract, if the contract says you have to protect, then you either break the contract and have to pay restitution for violating the contract, or you're required to by the means of the contract. So it is only the private system that actually has that duty to protect. The fuck are you talking about? So again, is unless I donate to the police, I will not have adequate protection if something is to happen to me. How is that not coercion? Now you're just coercing people to donate under the threat no, 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 not, that I'm they could otherwise be murdered and have nobody to call for help. No, I, I'm not coercing people to donate. It's up to individuals to voluntarily decide. And if they donate. don't make that decision to voluntarily donate, they risk having a shittier police protection, a.k.a. more theft, more murder. 
Possibly. I mean, if you're not so willing how to is that not coercion? In your own defense, if you're not willing. All right. So now, so now we get to this point. He really needs to dig into this, like I did with the other Marxists, right? Because I mean, he's he might he's no different than a communist. He just advocates for slow levels of communism. But we get into this point now, right, where he says, "How is it not coercion?" Well, what he's talking about is any violation of positive rights and any violation of environmental factors that limit choice is coercion. So if we follow this through logically. What he's saying is that hurricanes are coercion. Tornadoes are coercion. Forest fires are coercion. Crime is coercion, obviously, which it is a form of coercion. Um, but that any environmental factor that affects an ability's person to have a wider range of choices is coercion. And now the human condition is coercion and coercion is meaningless. This is how they try and redefine words so that they can then say that, well, since coercion really just means anything that might limit any choice whatsoever, now we can engage in my, my discussion of positive rights and why they're better. And it's a sneaky way to try and change the language that it doesn't seem like this guy is picking up on but most people don't pick up on it. It's slimy bullshit and you need to nail him to the fucking wall for his stupidity. Going to lift a finger in your own, own defense by donating some money to the police force. I mean, maybe is it on them in that case? Like, is it their fault that they're not getting any protection? I mean, why should they get something for nothing? No, no. Well, hold on. Yes. First of all, yes. You already said that everybody should get a baseline level of police protection. So I'm yeah. saying they will get that. Which you have yet to demonstrate, because if they're not donating, I don't know where that baseline no, police protection even comes from. Maybe it, maybe <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to pause because there's no way I was going to listen to that after the image that you just sent me, Mark. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Which you have yet to demonstrate. That's why I got distracted for a little bit earlier. I just, I had to make that. Oh, fuck. Right, because if they're not donating, I don't know where that baseline no, police protection even comes from. Maybe it Maybe an individual won't donate, but as, as a community, I think they will. And if they don't, I, I tend Is to think that's their problem. Is the community not just a group of individuals all donating? Sure, and there's there's going to be a level of wealth in any given community. And I think any and given it community... And the police know. protection and the quality of your protection should not be hinged upon your wealth. Now you're trying to go around to, sure well, well, is well why, not? No, why not? Because why do wealthy people deserve to be protected from murder and from theft and also have a faster police response than people who are poor? Why is that the case? And that's... I'm not, I'm not saying they do deserve a faster police response. It's That's what would happen security. if they had better funding. Uh, yes. They, just, they, dude, they just, will have better. just bite this bullet and say, yes, they absolutely deserve that. The fuck is wrong with you? Why are you limiting the ability of individuals to freely choose for private security? Are you against private security? Do you think the Secret Service shouldn't exist because the president is like some... Is um is just a citizen? Do you think that no one else should be able to hire private security? Do you think that like, you know... Pop stars and people like that shouldn't be adequately protected because they have additional risk. They shouldn't have a right to do that. Do you think we should all be taxed to make uh, to make Post Malone safer? He's a multimillionaire. You don't think he can afford that? Do you think Post Malone needs to be taxed at a 90 percent rate so that Post Malone can get more police that follow him like this is fucking stupid? Yes, they absolutely fucking deserve that, period better private security i i, I mean do, do you think you're being like, an idiot right now no we're not talking about private security dude we're talking about i would argue that ancaps change language too by saying positive rights are slavery um you're changing words to yeah except we you, we have it's not chattel slavery i've never made that claim the problem is is that like an american audience and like and most people in the west their education immediately goes to chattel slavery but what slavery really is, is just some form of ownership over another person's body. And positive rights require some ownership over another person's body. Is it? This is why I make the house Negro argument. By simply saying that, you know, yes, there are different forms of slavery, just like in the old South, where there were some people picking cotton, and then there were some people that were house Negroes. But I don't want to be a house Negro just because it's better than being a slave that works out in the fields. I want to be free. About calling 911 in the case of an emergency.
Fucking pineapple. <laughs> Private uh, security, dude. We're talking about calling 911 in the case of an emergency. Better funding means better police response times. What you're saying is that... No, it fucking doesn't. It only means that in a fucking anarcho-capitalist system. In America, even with better funding... Thanks, <laughs> thanks for the follow again. Even with fucking the funding that we have, there are plenty of neighborhoods that they don't fucking show up to. Like, what are you talking about? Because they are wealthy, they deserve that because they've earned it, quote unquote. But the poor people, well, too bad because they're just not lifting a finger to help themselves. We've already established. No, he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a, a logical reason that comes down to why he thinks, like, oh, sorry. What, oh, shit, fuck. What, what were we going through? What was the language change? Oh, coercion. Where coercion, the, you, you completely change the principal elements of the definition, right? So coercion or aggression right is is forcing someone to do something against their will that requires the use of their scarce resources and property so their 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 body or their private property right you he's turned coercion into an entirely new definition that means anything that limits choice at all any environmental factor that does so when we say that taxation is slavery or that positive rights are slavery we maintain the principal distinction, which is that they have some ownership over their body and they're and, and that we're accepting that level of 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 a violation of that self ownership. No, it's it's totally different. I'm just I refuse no, I refuse to accept that because we're that because we're not talking about chattel slavery and it evokes an emotional response, that that's somehow us doing the exact same thing. Like it one totally changes the definition and one maintains it. Slavery isn't some ownership. It's complete ownership. Historically, that's also not true. Plenty of systems of slavery, um, plenty of systems of slavery throughout the world have been um, where you were only owned for part of the day or you were only owned for certain tasks. And then you were allowed to be able, you were allowed to do other tasks that allowed you to buy your freedom. What you're talking about is chattel slavery in the American South where you were owned fully and wholly and you were owned because of your identity. I'm oh, sorry, wrong button. Oh, established that a lot of these communities are squeezing by on two fucking jobs. Uh, well, first of all, do you want to have a civil conversation here? I'm being incredibly civil. Well, you just said I was being an idiot. Uh, yeah, that's a civil way of saying you're, yeah, I'm being civil enough because you are being an idiot. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I've been calling this man an idiot for like fucking two hours straight or like an hour and a half straight. <laughs> and this yeah. man's like, do you want to be civil here? Like, Oh man, you have stepped into the fucking blood sports area. And like, to be fair, he has been relatively fucking civil. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I, I don't think if, if you think that's appropriate, I'm not sure that uh... you're the one who just. Well, yeah, no, but man, manacost.com. Yes. Some slaves were allowed to purchase their freedom. Some slaves were given the ability to purchase their freedom. This is not the same thing as the system itself inherently allowing the ability to do so. Right. Like plenty of systems of slavery where slaves were captured um, via like war or from like tribal conquest or, or things like that. Like the Greeks, for example, they had slaves and they were required to do certain duties for a period of time, but then they were perfectly free to engage in their own labor and have their own property and things of that nature. And were able, once they main, got enough money, they, they, the, the, the rate wasn't even set by their owners. It was set by the society for them to be able to purchase their own freedom. That's what I mean. Like in those societies, that's obviously a form of partial slavery. And yet we don't, we don't put some asterisks by it, and not call it slavery. Oh, God damn it. I did it again. Pressing the wrong fucking button. All right. Well, I, I don't think if, if yes, you think free I'm not sure that's uh, you're the one who just, who's was basically that's... arguing that rich people deserve protection from murder and poor people don't. That's not very civil either. No, that's, that's a straw man. 
It's the logical follow through. It is literally what would practically happen if we were to apply your worldview. Uh, can I get some sources for that? <laughs> like what? <laughs> well, that's what you think, but I don't agree with that. And I'm trying to argue why I don't think that's the right uh, inference from my premises. We can disagree about whether that actually follows. Okay. But I don't think calling me an idiot is is uh, really called for here. Okay. I so how would your solution as as you, be better? I mean, they've both been pretty civil up to this point. But I mean, like, I you have a right to be like, please don't do that. Like, we're going to have a civil conversation or not. I wouldn't have that conversation with Hunter. <laughs> because it almost sounds like at this point you're advocating for taxes with different steps. I'm No, I'm not advocating for taxes. I'm adv I advocate for a voluntary system. I think there would be voluntary contributions from any community, regardless of the, weather, the level of wealth. And I do think there might be differences in the quality of police. If you live in a very rich community, uh, those people are going to be able to afford a better police system than a poor community. But and that's as bad. I mentioned before, I don't, I don't know. I don't think. Why? Explain it. Explain why you think private security should be banned. Please explain. Why, why should it be illegal to have private security? Are you going to support that law? Where's your petition to, to put up that law to make all private security illegal? Economic inequality per se is a bad thing. It depends on how it came about. If you got your wealth by stealing it from somebody else, I think that's bad. That's unjust and that should be stopped. But if you got your, your wealth through honest production and trade, not engaging through fraud, engaging in fraud or anything like that, and you, as a result, become wealthier, I don't see a problem with that. So you're talking about means like testing who is genuinely wealthy and who isn't to decide that overall, or to decide which wealthy person deserves a degree of better protection? All right, at this point, Hunter Avalon is not even fucking listening. Nobody said anything about means testing, right? He's talking, he's, he's saying that, like, if you earned your wealth legitimately, there's no reason to say that it's immoral for you to be able to buy products and services that are better, including policing. He's not saying like we should means test to understand whether or not the wealthy have earned wealth, et cetera. Like this is, this is just interjecting random shit and saying, this is what you're talking about. Nobody brought that up, but you did. Uh, also, I kind of wish this guy two, two, two in his chat would pop up in our channel. Uh, two, two, two. Does it have to, though? Yeah. Why not create industry here? We are so obsessed with our current materialist state. We don't have to be the American empire to be happy and sustain ourselves. Interesting. Or to decide which wealthy person deserves a degree of better protection. Why would we do this? Why do we need to do this? Isn't taxing just much more efficient? Doesn't it make way more sense? Tax poor community. <laughs> Isn't taxing so much more efficient than the market? Said no one that understands Marx's uh, economics ever. Like fucking what? He's less because they have less money. Tax rich people more because they have more money and distribute police protection across the country as adequately and equally as possible. Boys, we have a sub goal of 200 where we're going to give out books to a random person. Um, and that, that's an amazing thing. We're going to give out three hardback books, uh, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, um, The Way of the Samurai, um, as well as The Five Rings by more, more, uh, my, more, I can't say Miyamoto, Musashi. Musashi. Miyamoto, thank you. I couldn't remember. But at 250, we'll give out a book that Hunter Avalon desperately, desperately needs to read. That's Basic Economics by Thomas Sowell. Because it's very clear that he has not read and or comprehended basic economics by Thomas Sowell. Because if he did, he wouldn't be making these trash ass arguments. So, uh, you know, if you want to sub uh, to make sure people don't watch advertisements, be my guest. Someone will get a copy at 250 for the first time. Of course, every month we'll give out one copy of Anatomy of the State. And distribute police protection across the country as adequately and equally as possible. Not to mention, no, if we're talking about poor communities, there would be more crime because crime follows poverty. Uh, I, I don't think. Also, crime does not follow poverty. There are plenty of areas that are incredibly impoverished that have low crime rates. Like, right, like you, you can't just immediately do a one to one comparison that like crime follows poverty. That's not how that works. What seems to be the issue is that poverty is likely to increase ACEs, adverse childhood events. 
There's also a policing situation that causes that there's policing situations such as the war on drugs, etc., that causes the poverty, right? So the poverty is actually not caused by the crime. It's caused by the over enforcement of crime by the laws that are created by the state. Um, and then that is labeled crime. And then that occurs. There's also the genie coefficient localized. So when you talk about poverty, sometimes it's about relative income towards those that are nearby. And there's a certain like animosity of like, why do they have what I don't have? So this is why you, you tend to see sometimes like higher crime in inner cities where people work in wealthier areas than in like poor rural areas where there's a lot, where there tends to be a lot less crime because there aren't those wealthy people around that like are a part of their community, but constantly remind them. There's also gangs that are supported by the types of laws that we create again, he, over and over again, he reads some study that's, they doesn't even read the study. He reads a reference of a study in some leftist journalist piece and then goes, wow, this is the cause. And then makes these univariate analyses. When you're talking about two totally system, two totally different systems of governance, it's really trash analysis. And it's stupid to make those claims because if you ever bump into somebody that can actually pick apart those claims, you can see how dumb of an analysis it is. <laughs> Roland, all, all that last argument is, is an argument to fence off the rich areas and don't allow the poor in. I mean, kind of, yeah. Again, there's, there's a lot going on here. So I, I don't think uh, poverty is the, at least not the primary factor in crime. I don't think that's that's really what, what drives it. But anyway, well, what do you think it, drives it? Like a, a big, uh, what do I think drives poverty? Maybe we come back to that, but I don't want to get too, too off track. I've just, um, I, I don't want to get too off track either. I'm just, I'm curious what your response would be to the fact that historically, even people who live in poverty have higher crime rates, but then when they're no longer in poverty, they have lower crime rates. Like, it's yeah, this univariate analysis is fucking stupid. Obvious that crime follows poverty, and then crime contributes to poverty. Dog, I can't believe that I have to tell someone that's a professional online debate, bro. Um, let me switch this fucking song. This song sucks. Let's go to lo-fi. It's that time of night, boys. We gotta switch over to lo-fi. Lo-fi, 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 lo-fi. Right. I just want to point out, I can't believe that I have to tell an internet debate bro that does this for a living and makes pretty good money doing it, I presume, that causation is not correlation. Like, this is like, you learn this in high school. Just because two things track with each other doesn't mean that those two things are causal. Like how fucking stupid do you have to be to not understand causation is not equal correlation? You want to know you want to know something interesting? Did you know that there is a direct correlation between palm trees and the age of people that live in a county in America? Does that mean if I plant palm trees in, in, in my local community, people will magically become old? No! It means that old people like to live in warmer climates. So they move to places and they like to live in the beach. And warmer climates on the beach and places with palm trees tend to be more expensive because they're nicer places to live. And old people tend to have more money. Age is the biggest factor in wealth. So old people who like warmer climates and have more money tend to move to places that also have palm trees. That's why the more palm trees, the more palm trees there are in an area, the older the, the average population is. The palm trees didn't cause fucking people to become older. Palm trees are not fucking age. They're not vampires that have you as you walk by them fucking lure you in and suck away your vitality and make you age. Palm trees don't cause time traveling, right? The same way you don't just go, well, because crime in an area went down, poverty went down as well. That means that, right? You could just as easily make the argument that culture changes and that when a culture changes in a better way, it both reduces crime and poverty. Like there's a ton of different analyses you can do to better understand these. 
and you need to look at a multitude of factors. And even then you're just establishing historical facts and attempting to understand it because you can't isolate variables. Like sociology is not a hard science. It's, it's a, it's a pseudoscience. Now, granted it attempts to use the scientific method to the best of its ability and try to be predictive. And it is predictive in many ways. Lies. I have time traveling palm trees. People actually die from being hit by coconuts falling into what dude everywhere. Coconuts actually will kill you. Yeah. All in um, coconut will kill you. They're pretty dangerous. I think you can actually get coconut insurance in certain places too. But yeah. It, uh, it strikes your head with like the, it's like a one ton of kinetic force, something like that. Yeah. Palm tree will fuck you up. A falling pill looking. penny. Yeah, you're correct. Terminal velocity to a penny is still not enough to kill you. It will sting like a son of a bitch, though. Right. Pretty. And it becomes a. Also, for the record, it's pretty unlikely that a penny reaches terminal velocity, anyways. You have to drop it from really high up, and there's a lot of like wind drag that occurs. So, just throwing that out. Vicious cycle. I think much more important is the ideas that people hold than their level of income. So if you are a poor person and you are taught that you, you've been victimized by some unjust system, uh, then you might get it in your head that it's justified for you to commit crimes. That could be one reason. Do you think it would have something to do with crime. maybe feeling like you have no option but to commit a crime? What if you're really poor, you, you're starving, and you know, you, so you steal from a store? I mean, could that be the case also? You know what else could be the case is that that individual can't get a job because of the minimum wage. Just throwing that out there. Like there are plenty of homeless people that live in their car, right? That would love a job that could probably exist for them for four or $5 an hour. That would allow them to get on their feet a little bit, would allow them to be able to eat every day, would allow them to get a gym membership so that they could shower would allow them to maybe like go to Walmart and buy a couple a couple of outfits after after a little while and then you start building that money up and then all of a sudden they can get a better job because they showed up to a job interview with like a haircut and like being clean and with like some work experience and with like clean outfits and then they could they could they could actually do something for themselves but because the minimum wage prices out a lot of shitty jobs they can't do it they can't get those jobs that are too good for them because they're destitute and they look horrible and they're, they're unable to do well in a job interview. That's, that's one explanation. I don't think it's one of the many, probably mm -hmm. primarily your economic situation. But I think if you are in an emergency situation, like literally you will die uh, if you don't uh, steal something like, uh, then I, I think it could be justified to steal in that very delimited case. But I think that's... No, it's not. It's never justified to steal, all right? It's, it's never justified to steal, even if you're about to die. It just means that, like, when you go before the court system and restitution needs to be paid, you should be able to pay that restitution very easily. You steal something worth $10 and you pay somebody $20 and say, I'm sorry, I was starving. It's very likely that that person goes, like, I get it, your $20... And you're not allowed to do anything after that anyways, because you've been stopped. You've, you've made yourself out of criminality by paying them the $10 for the item stolen. And by, um, you know, you know, th there may be some argument about the subjective value of the object and you may need to go to arbitration or something, but most people are going to be forgiving of that situation anyways. Also the fact that like homeless shelters don't exist or something like, where the fuck are you? Are you out in the middle of the desert and you happen upon an oasis and you have no money in your pockets? Like what, what, what weird situation are you in that you need to steal or you're going to die? Like, it's just weird. It's an emergency, very atypical sort of case, which doesn't apply in general. So I, I don't think that's in general, a, 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 a justification for uh, stealing. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's, it's a, sociological and criminal like a criminologist fact that if you are poor you're more likely to commit crime you're more yes that is a fact in america if you are poor you're more likely to commit crime that tr that is true 
That is the first time you have said something true about the 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 connection between crime and poverty. Is that there is a connection? What are some other connections that uh, might increase your chances of committing crime? Do you want me to list them off? Oh, no, not really. I was, I don't know. I was just well, like saying. here's here's a, here's another one, right? Lead poisoning. Lead poisoning leads to a lot of fucking crime, and it just so happens to be, and it also leads to more. It leads to more aggressive. Um, your your fight or flight being fucked up. Your HPA axis, right? Um, it leads towards um drop in IQ. It leads towards obviously death and other things, but small amounts of lead poisoning leads to a drop in IQ and an increase in criminality. Where is the most lead poisoning coming from? Flint, Michigan. Well, yeah, places like that. Poor, low socioeconomic status, inner city communities with water pipes that still have lead. With slum lords that haven't replaced lead fixtures and lead, um, lead in the pipes and lead in the paint etc with um soil that is contaminated with lead that hasn't been upturned and cleaned it's mostly and predominantly inner city poor communities is where a lot of lead is that's one factor for crime and it just so happens to be that those poor areas that happen to have those situations right also you, that they happen to be poor like that that's a correlation that's not a causal thing the criminality is caused by the lead poisoning it's not caused by the poverty. Like that's a second order consequence. That's just one example of many different things that can cause it. The culture is another one I mentioned, right? You don't see similar rates of crime in Hasidic Jewish communities in New York city, even the impoverished ones. In fact, you see lower crime rates than in more affluent areas in New York city. I wonder why that is. How could they possibly be poor if the, if the poverty is causing the crime? Now, one could argue that the culture is a protective factor and that poverty still causes crime, but it's a protective factor to the increase in crime. But that doesn't make sense because it should be less of an increased crime as opposed to less crime overall. It's fucking stupid. It's just dumb fucking, it, it's, it's so dumb. Or desperate. It, it just, it's obvious. Well, there might be a correlation, but I, I don't think that gets at the causation. Thank you. <laughs> I love it very well. I, I think the ideas are much more relevant. Like if, if you are a poor person, but you're, you have the ideas that it's good to respect people's rights and not use physical force uh, to you know, rob someone or mug somebody on the street. Uh, if you if you are taught something like self uh, responsibility, people should be independent and uh, make their own way in the world. Then you're going to be much less likely uh, to commit crimes than someone who's taught you're a victim of of society. Uh, it's you've been treated unjustly. Do you think that maybe and... having poor education in general could contribute to criminality? Cri uh... Obviously, dipshit. But that would be a factor. But but here's the other thing too: is that you 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 just as easily could make the reverse analysis if you were a right winger, right? And say no, no, you're you're looking at the causal link wrong. Crime causes poverty. That's why we need law and order. It's the same logic. It's the exact it's the exact same logic to say that just well, crime causes poverty. That's why the two are connected. So that's why we need more policing. That's why crime went up and poverty is getting worse in places like Philadelphia and New York and Chicago when they and and in Kenosha where they put in measures to defund police. That's why we need more policing and we need law and order in these communities so the businesses will invest in them. Right? Like you're using, you're just using the Uno reverse card of the conservative argument for law and order. They're both dumb arguments. <laughs> the, the Ben Shapiro law and order argument is fucking stupid. Is just as stupid as Hunter Avalon's fucking like, you know, the poverty causes the crime. And if we just had UBI, the crime would go down massively. It's dumb. We instituted welfare in these places. It made crime worse. It didn't help crime. Crime behavior? Of course, it's just a historical fact. Again, I can't say for certain that the 
that the introduction of welfare actually made it worse. I can just say that it got worse with the introduction of, of welfare. So it didn't it obviously, was- it obviously didn't have a massive good effect. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, you basically said it for me. Right. I mean, like, like whether or not other issues were there, like, sure. But like, it's not this fucking magic cure all because it, it wasn't. I think the poor education could, could be a factor. I mean, I, I think, I think our education, our public education system is, is very poor in it today. And it does a very bad job of preparing uh, children to be uh, self-respecting, responsible, independent adults. And nope, I think that it's could play a role is- in uh, increasing. What's that? Of course, the chat's uh, saying this guy wants feudalism. People always say that when you when you argue for libertarianism. Yep. It's just that it's like one of the gold go to insults. It's like where you talk the roads, um, age of consent for whatever fucking reason, even though like we're usually for a, a higher age of consent than most fucking most fucking statists are. Um, uh, what's the other one? Um, Neo feudalism or feudalism. These are kind of the big ones. And then, of course, forcing every argument into courts and policing. In crime. So I don't yeah, know I think that's, that's I mean, what you're factor. talking about right now, you're saying that the schools are bad, but yet right now the schools that are particularly shitty are in disadvantaged communities right now. That's not true, right? Like you're, you're, you're talking about the public school system, right? The state, the, the state run system that you think is so superior has these bad schools. And if we just, if we just vote in the right people, if we just get the right laws, it'll magically solve itself. But the private school system or the voucher system that takes in scholarships that are in poor areas have beat like what, what's the one in New York that is like predominantly gets grants and things like that and charity. And Oh God. And they take in like inner city black kids. They beat out the best private schools in all of New York city. They beat out some of the wealthiest kids in the world. They, they just, they demolished them in terms of their test scores. What is it? Let me, let me look this up so I can, so I can find it. Real quick. Hold on. Yeah. I know you've talked about it before, but I, I have no idea what, what to even guess is the name of that school. Really? Um, uh... The Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta uh, apparently does so, according to Chief Tonto. Oh my God! What is it? It's um. I have faith in you. I'm sure you'll get there. I'm gonna find it. I just can't remember what the fuck. Oh my God! Not the state of New York, New York City. Why is Google giving me fucking school lunches is the first thing. I know that, I know that fucking, um, okay. What is this school? I know fucking, um, Shanker Institute. I know Casimir knows. I just can't remember the fucking name of it. Hmm. Uh, I don't uh, know. I'll, I'll find Institute? it. I don't remember uh, no, the no. name of it. No, that's a different thing. Never mind. They did the study. Mm, I fucking Kaz- Casimir can get it for me. I'll DM him later about it. All right, let's continue. Now there is a system that, like according to you, coerces everybody to put money into that school, and the school is still super fucking shitty. I don't know how removing that and then just saying, eh, donate if you want to, would somehow improve anything. It would just make stuff worse. I, l- I, I love competition, I, free competition. Would make that- I love this. I love this. We force you to put money into it. How? And it's shitty as fuck. So, like, how is your system going to be any better? 
Well, you just admitted your your system is shitty as fuck, though. Like over and over again, it's you running. keep right. Like just compared to people that homeschool. Like there there are plenty of poor people that homeschool, and they're way better off than any of the public schools. Like the people that have taken education into the parents who have taken education in their own hands are doing better than the state. Like, why do you think more and more money is going to magically solve this? It's stupid. Things a lot better. So if you've got a, a public school, which gets a certain allotment of money every year from the government, regardless of how good or how bad they perform, and they don't have much of an incentive to do better. But if you have a free market system of education where you know you're going to go out of business as a school, if you don't perform well, now you all of a sudden have an incentive to put in a lot of effort to make a good product and turn out good students, get good results. But they're already getting paid, right? And the schools are not as good in these other areas because they're underfunded. Oh, he just restated his point and completely ignored what he said, hoping that he'll fucking jump off of this. Like, what a fucking sad pivot. Teachers well, are already paid. Like they're, they, they're not as good part as they would be in a free market system because there's no incentive to become good. They're going to get this money from the government regardless of how well they perform. I don't, I don't mind this libertarian guy. Like he's doing all right. Um, he's obviously not like a debate, bro. He got offended because he got called an idiot. And like, you know what I mean? Like his rhetoric isn't the greatest. And he's like trying to be like a little too charitable with like, Oh, well let's pick that apart. And like assuming Hunter's arguing in good faith, which he's not right. Um, instead of calling out those things and attacking. Um, but that being said, the guy's not like floundering terribly. That being said, this seems like what happens when libertarians don't educate themselves on like conservative communities, right? Like no mention of homeschooling, no mentioning of how education is done in like by the, by the Hasidic community, right? Which might now be a bad time because they'll just reference fucking the bullshit New York times article. That was a hit piece. And then you'll have to go through explaining why that's fucking wrong. You know, the well is poisoned on that argument, but like, no, no, no talking about homeschooling, Montessori schools, right? Like, like if you come prepared, to, which to be fair, that wasn't the topic. So like, I understand he's not prepared by it, but like people are not learning from their conservative, more ANCAP minded people because we've, 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 we have this weird thing where we've isolated ourselves with, within libertarianism to like other LP people and like other libertarians. And we're not paying attention to all of the conservative communities that are far closer to our ideology than any other community in existence and like learning what actually works. And so there's not, there's this kind of like fallback to economic theory and you're not making the, the kind of like the arguments that you would get from understanding systems that do work under mutual aid. And I don't know if it's, because of a fear of discussing like because you don't hang out in like right wing circles enough, or if it's because mutual aid and things like that get a little bit too close to the language and the arguments made from leftist anarchists. I don't know which one is the reason that like stops a lot of libertarians from understanding these things, but like there, there seems to be like a, a lack of knowledge in, in certain like examples and like ways and like creative positive prescriptions or maybe it's just we don't fucking do positive prescriptions i don't know ah that's what it is the success academy thank you thank you mad villainy the success academy the charter school system in new york city fucking demolished the wealth in harlem in harlem demolished every fucking private school in existence in new york city which is like where like hedge fund managers and like bankers go Thank you for that. I was, I was trying to think of the name of it. I appreciate it. Whereas if you have a competition system, they're going to go out of business. They're not going to have a job the next year, possibly, if they... Uh... <laughs> this guy just types, bears, pedophilia, consensual cannibalism. <laughs> um, interesting. Didn't make any of the arguments. Just put the words out there for, like, word association game. That's hilarious produce very low quality results so what if they're a, producing a low quality results not through any fault of their own like a lot of these teachers in these underfunded schools are working hard as shit 
<laughs> and there's still poorer education because of the overall funding of the schools and because more poverty leads to less time for academic achievement outside of the school. I mean, there's no getting around the fact that if you don't face competition, you're you're not going to produce as good results. This I mean, is actually there might be not true either. This is why I just brought up the power grid thing as well. There's competition in some of these areas. People still will cut corners in order to save money. This happens in construction a lot, too. There are government regulations that make it so that you have to abide by certain standards. They will cut corners if those standards aren't there, regardless of the like, competition. I didn't realize that was his like follow thing. I was like, what the fuck did I accidentally play? See, did you see the name there, though? Jimmy McGill, attorney. Oh, yeah. The guy that was coming in here like, how dare you? You're st What's wrong with, with the Atlantic? have to abide by certain standards. They will cut corners if those standards aren't there, regardless of the competition. There, well, if you have a government granted monopoly on something, then there's by definition not going to be competition. So if you run a public school in a given area and uh, there's no, no one else can start a school or maybe they're, they're crowded out, people are crowded out, the uh, investors or entrepreneurs are economically crowded out from investing in starting a school in that area because they just know that uh, people's taxes, maybe property taxes are already high enough that they're not going to want to put additional money into a private school. Well, now you can't compete as a private school against this government. Uh, but there's private Obviously. Schools Obviously. right now, and we already have public schools. But private schools exist. Yeah, dude, but the, the private school exists in spite of people being taxed for public education and then that service being available to them without any additional cost to them. Right there, the public school system is so fucking trash that people are willing to pay 10, 20, 30, 40, and in some cases, a hundred thousand dollars a semester to send them to a nicer school, despite the other school being free. It's not really free because you're taxed, but it's pri so much private education is priced out of the market because of this. Schools as well. Yeah, but not nearly as many. I mean, it's a it's a relatively small market. I, I think I've heard like, I don't know what the statistic is, maybe like 90% of schools are, are public. But Well, yeah, uh, of course, but private schools offer benefits the, uh, that the public schools otherwise can't. This is why some parents want to send their children to a Catholic private school, because a public school can't teach religion, but a private school can. Uh, yeah, they have more freedom and in the way... They so they're offering not, a unique um, benefit as opposed to the public schools... And you're saying somehow competition would just fix this, even though right now we still have competition and we also have private schools. We still have competition. They have to compete with free. That is stolen money from people. And we have competition. Dude, this is such a, this is like, this is, th this feels like fucking shame segment. It's not, because I don't feel like cutting on the music and bullshit right now. But Jesus Christ, that is such a dumb fucking economic take. What, what a brain dead take. We have competition. What? Schools, or excuse me, public schools. And those public schools right now are shitty because of the funding. How would any of this improve? You're saying now because the teacher's like, I better work even harder so that I make enough money? I don't Yo, tea time true. Someone's like, what about the Texas power grid? And it's like, what about it, dude? Like California's rolling brownouts all the fucking time. Like Okay, and also what the fuck does that have to do with anything here? The teacher's like, I better work even harder so that I make enough money? I don't even understand. Like if it's the salary job, that wouldn't even necessarily follow. There's 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 some competition right now, but I'm saying there's not nearly enough. So yes, there are some private schools, maybe a very small minority, ten percent or whatever it is, but uh, th there would be a lot more of that. So, like unfortunately, right now you might have to be wealthy in order to a, afford to send your kids to a, a, a private school. But if we had a free market, I think uh, costs would come down. You would see a lot of a lot more lower cost. We already have a free market. Options for what? We already have a free market. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, Hunter Avalon. Dude, if, 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 if we had more money, I would li like, and when I say more, I don't mean like, here's a dollar more. I mean, like if we weren't struggling financially, I would literally just give him a copy of basic economics at this point. I would just mail it to him as a meme. 
It's like, hey, little note that says, hey, I saw your debate. You clearly need to read this. This is so fucking, we have a free market right now. You, what in the fuck, what in the absolute fuck are you talking about? And also policy wonker true. No, we, we have nothing. I, this is actually one thing I, I wanted to talk a lot about. We have far, far from a free market today. I mean, we have a massive no, I don't think it's gonna government get intervention in the economy. Public school being a, a good example of this. Um, public, uh, so the entire social security system, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, public roads. Yes, all the because uh, you can't leave everything up. No, 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 this is your problem. Is, you don't understand that there's such a thing as a market failure. Oh, God. Oh. <sighs> I can't wait to hear his explanation of a market failure. I can't wait. I can't wait. And the medical side of things is actually one of those market failures. We well, have we right now, hold on, wait, we have private medical, wait, 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 we have private medical, okay? No, we don't. There's plenty of competition, but yet still this medical, the, the medical uh, um, care here in America is absolute garbage with the insurance and the inter intertwining insurance with the care, needing to pay to have life saving. So he's not actually going to explain what a market failure is. So a market failure is when the market fails, presumably, to provide some form of good or service to, um, to society because the profit incentive doesn't exist, right? So the idea being that like healthcare wouldn't be affordable, there's no profit motive, and because the profit motive doesn't exist, or because there's some crash because the market, um, you know, did some things you know what I mean? Like, like if you're the type of person that believes, for example, that like the 2009 financial collapse was created by the market and then like people lose their homes, et cetera, that this is a market failure, right? So anytime there's a boom and bust, this is a market failure. But really what it's talking about is that there is a marginal social cost and a marginal social demand for products that don't necessarily meet the supply and demand equation. Now, this is a myth. It's not true. It just, there's no such thing as a market failure in an economy, in an evenly rotating economy. Now, in a non-evenly rotating economy, which is kind of like all economies under a free market, unless you have like perfect economy, there will be times that their people want something and it's not available in the market. But this quote unquote market failure also creates what's known as a market void, which means if something isn't supplied, there's a void, which means that there is a possibility for someone to gain some form of profit off. They need to innovate. They need to add into the market in some capacity. Mutual aid could take over. There is um, charitable organizations that could take over. You know, I do a whole fucking video on my YouTube. It's an older video now, but I explain how charitable organizations can handle supposed market failures in the economy um, under an anarcho-capitalist system. Um, it's a really silly argument to say that the government is needed because the market didn't do this thing, right? Whereas like you could say these are government failures and then you could say, well, the market is needed because the government doesn't do these things. The fact of the matter is that there is literally nothing that the market can, can't do that the government can. It's non-existent. There's, there's no solution that the government can, that government can create that can't be created by the market. But then they just presume that because something isn't currently being done, that we can tax people and then we can create a, a mandatory system and that that will solve it. Well, the market can solve it as well. But when you tax people and solve it, well, obviously the market can't solve it because now there's no market void. And then if you just blame the market and you increase regulation, you increase things, what you end up with is the economic calculation problem where the state is forced to expend additional resources in order to solve said problem. And it's more expensive for the state to solve it. And, and even still, they cannot do it as well as the market can ever because it always requires these baked in inefficiencies in order to deal with resource allocation. It's an absurd and stupid misunderstanding of basic economic theory. But of course he's not going to explain it because he probably doesn't understand it. It's just one of those fucking buzzwords that he uses. Being care, you talk about Medicaid, but Medicaid is also means tested. Medicaid, you can't just get on Medicaid one day if you feel like it. You only can qualify for Medicaid if you're below a certain amount of income. 
Yeah. So there, I, I agree. There. I mean, that portion is true. But if you think that there aren't fucking people that take advantage of the Medicaid Medicare system and then don't take advantage of the social security system. And you don't think that because of the economic calculation problem, the state doesn't have people working in DC that go through these applications and automatically deny people all of the time as a means of trying to prove that these people belong. Or you think that if you don't have enough documentation, you get auto denied because you happen to be homeless or you happen to be the worst individuals that need it the most. And that those people end up getting fucked the most then you just don't understand those government programs. But of course you don't. You have, you have key words like it's means tested, therefore good. And you don't understand the failures of the state in the, in the way that they steal wealth. And so there's this assumption that Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid goes to people that need it, but it's actually the people that need it the most that get denied. But of course, this is just another thing that you, you – don't understand because you don't understand economics and it seems like you get all of your information off of Atlantic journals. There are a lot but do you realize the source of news, right? Most were the most trusted name in news, the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. So there, I, I agree. There are a lot, but do you realize the reason why that is right is because people who are poor, who are lower than certain, uh, certain line of income. I don't know what it is exactly do not have the same access to that medical care. Now you're going even a step further. Now it sounds like you're saying, if you're wealthy, you get the better police, the better schools, and the better health care. And if you're poor, what? Fuck them? Unless you are lucky enough. You don't get to steal to provide services to other people, number one. Number two, yes, you get better things when you have more money to pay for them and you choose to do those things. And that is not only, not only morally justified, it is morally good. It is morally good that people not only have the freedom to do so, but even from a consequentialist perspective. Because when people spend money for a premium of services, that is how innovation occurs. When people have a, a high demand, but there is a low supply for things, that is when innovation occurs. So the idea that there is a disparity between policing, a disparity between healthcare, and a disparity between education in a free market means that innovation occurs so that those at the bottom can, the people that are producing education, healthcare, and policing for those at the bottom attempt to innovate in order to make things cheaper so that they can provide the service at a cheaper rate, which expands the amount of people that they can afford, that they can give services to so that more people can afford those services, which thus increases their profit. And at the top end, it means that they're constantly competing to innovate new technologies technologies and new systems of training and new little fun things that they can put in a brochure so that they can outcompete the other people that are also similarly attempting to innovate. It means that we get better policing practices at the top and cheaper policing practices at the bottom and that the better policing practices at the top eventually become things that people want but can't afford at the bottom, which means there's innovation for people to find cheap ways to produce those better things at the bottom and thus a rising tide, uh, a rising tide lifts all ships. It is that system of competition and innovation that makes this, those very systems better for everybody instead of lam languishing in the socialistic form of, of evening and flattening the curve that is socialized medicine, socialized policing, and socialized education that does nothing but allow for rights-based systems that you can't fire bad people. It allows for ideological corruption, indoctrination within these systems. It allows for a rot of systems that lack innovation and destroy the very things you're attempting to provide. You want poor people to suffer. You want poor people to have shitty education. You want poor people to have more murders and more crime. And you want poor people to have crappy fucking health care. And you want to make sure that indoctrination is involved in all of those steps so that they continue to rot and so that the ideological systems are able to take over those. That is what you are advocating for when you are advocating for fucking taxation and for funding these systems as a means of fucking fixing them. It's stupid. And it's stupid because you don't understand basic economics. Go back to a fucking econ class in high school and learn this shit. And don't just learn fucking key words like market failure so that you can get them on a test. Actually read the goddamn textbook so that you understand what the things are that you're fucking saying.
Jesus. Fucking dunce. I'm done. I'm done now. I'm good. I got that out. You feel good? I'm all right. I feel a little better. My voice doesn't feel good, but I feel better for calling him out for the fucking idiot he is. I have no problem with him calling me an idiot. I have no problem calling him an idiot. The problem is, is that I can back it up and he can't. Well, we'll, we'll find out. Find five bucks under the vending machine on your way home that you can donate to the local police? This is ridiculous. No. And this is a problem with keep going back to donate. Like, he's going he's gonna to hammer in the donate, and you have to, like, fucking pivot from that. Sorry, you do. You have to say, that's one fucking model. Let me explain the other models. Right? Like, you address it, but you move on. Because it's stupid. Oh, that's, that's a straw man. <laughs> Um, it's it's a fact of of uh, reality that it, the wel wealthier people get better quality things, but I don't think that's an injustice. It's not an injustice when you say better quality things. It is an injustice if the better sure, quality thing that you're talking about is medical care, education, no, 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 and no. police protection. I don't think there's anything magical about uh, health care or police protection or anything. Whatever field you're talking about, if you're what? wealthier, you're going to be what? able to afford better quality. According to your worldview. Wealthy people would be able to fund their own police stations more adequately, thus resulting in faster police responses and better overall police protection. It's almost like funding them better might lead to innovation of things within policing. It's almost like when flat screen TVs came out, they were like $9,000 a piece. And now you can go on a Black Friday and get a fucking flat screen smart TV for like 150 bucks. And it's pretty fucking big. It's almost like the premium service that is offered to wealthy people eventually trickles down towards other people because the premium is what is needed to invest all of the time and research to produce these awesome fucking things. And then once those things are produced, then people can figure out how to produce them cheaply. But the technology needs to be invented first. You need research and development, etc. Oh, God, fucking stupid. It's so many dumb takes back to back to back. It's like, it's like arguing with a high school kid that gets all of his information off of TikTok. It's literally that level of analysis and Oof. thinks that he's got the whole fucking world figured out. They would have better yeah, police that protection. True that's true of anything. They can afford better restaurants. They can afford better, better restaurants vacation. don't matter. That's not a life or death kind of situation. The way that calling the police if you're in the case of a fucking murder is. No, you dumb bitch. But food is. You could easily just say that people need food, that they have to be fed and then be like, well, can I have better places to eat? And then you go, well, that's an injustice because people need food. By your own goddamn logic, you're you would have to get rid of better restaurants. You're just picking and choosing what it is that you think should be and shouldn't be better and saying it's different cause reasons. But it, there's no logical difference between saying that food is a basic necessity and thus food must be applied via the tax dollars and that it's wrong that better food be given to rich people than cheap people. Like this is the type of like, like, and this is what happens when you have no understanding of the philosophy that you're fucking touting. You just have fucking bullet points is that you aren't able to actually logically look at your own shit and figure out where you're deriving things from. You have no first principles. You're a fucking dunce. Is. That's why everyone would have at least a baseline of a little police. And if how are they going to have, have a, okay, I'm going to make you answer this question. How are they going to have a baseline if you're not doing taxation? Well, I've, I've already mentioned a couple of methods. Uh, yeah, you really shouldn't say that they deserve, they don't deserve a baseline. It's likely that most people will. But like if some dude that lives out in the fucking mountains doesn't want to pay for policing because it's absurdly expensive. And even if he does have policing, like what the fuck are they going to do anyways? Under the current system, the response time will be like two hours. He doesn't need policing. What he needs is, is, is to not be taxed for police that don't fucking help him so he can buy Hesco berries. <laughs> I love Hesco berries. Right, like, but you see what I'm saying? Like, like, not everyone is gonna have a minimal level of policing. Some people are just gonna protect themselves. Some people are gonna band together and protect each other. There's nothing wrong with that. Donations and lotteries. There are there are additional mechanisms. What makes you think that people who are already poor, who are already hardly able to support their own schools because the taxation is so low, are gonna just go down to the lottery? 
That's an irresponsible way to spend money. Doug, that's literally how education is funded today. It's one of the ways in which it's funded. Do you want to do you want to abolish the lottery and increase taxes? Huh? Unlikely. I don't. I, yeah, I doubt it. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, if he's still got some conservatism in him somewhere deep down, and he thinks you know gambling is evil and bad, and we should and we should just tax everybody. I mean, like, I mean, make that argument, but be logically consistent. Well, I think maybe we're starting midstream here. You're you're already assuming they're uh, they're poor, and there's also a question of relative poverty versus absolute poverty. I mean, if if you're in a very primitive society uh, of you know like a Stone Age, dog, dog, why would you fucking bring this up right? Like this is just this is begging to get memed on. Because he's not a debate bro. Yeah, I was like, dog, you've not dealt with these people. This is begging to get, yeah. Oof, that's rough, dude. I, I don't know how Hunter's going to take this, but I feel like you're about to get memed on hard. For that. If, if you're in a very primitive society uh, of, you know, like a Stone Age kind of person, you're going to need some kind of, kind of uh, security even in that society. It may just consist of having a spear or something very simple, but you're going to need something. Uh, and But as a society or civilization advances, and it becomes wealthier, you can afford higher and higher quality. The reason for charity. that is because of taxation. No. Because not everybody in the country is becoming wealthier and wealthier. So what you're saying is, be, so there would be a baseline police protection for everybody. That baseline would still be better for the wealthy because they're able to more adequately fund the baseline police. There is no sure, way around, around the fact that. that according to your worldview, poor people get shafted. Poor people no. don't get adequate access. Okay, the way he's presenting it is, you know, full of other assumptions but like he's kind of right here right like it is it is the like as it, the, the causal link is kind of stupid but yeah like as societies get more um well let's look at cousinette's curve i think cousinette's curve really actually helps explain this a little bit better right so It's a little bit more complicated than he's saying, but I'm, I'm not surprised he doesn't understand. Um, mm, um, wealth. All right. So it's really simple. Um, I'm just looking. What, what bitch will you show the image? Is my ad blocker blocking the image? This is how ironic. We'll just open the image in a new, um, new, new window. Not link. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god. But you did do it. Okay. Here we go. So this is Kuznets curve, right? So the way this actually works is that the more so this is this is income um inequality, right? So like as you're developing, income inequality gets worse. Right? So when 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 industrialization occurs, things like that, right? So as third world countries or as feudal economies develop, income inequality grows. So yes, he is right in the sense that like as a society gets more and more advanced, income inequality gets worse and worse. But there's a certain turning point, right, where Kuznets curve actually shows that income inequality begins to decrease. This is the formation of the middle class, right? So in the very beginning, when things occur, there's this kind of pattern where there's this rich nobility that wouldn't exist in an anarchist society, mind you, right? but does exist in like monarchical systems and like kind of like old authoritarian systems that we have today. Where there's some people that kind of have all the wealth and, and other, and et cetera. And as it develops in an industrialized, their capacity to gain wealth, all of that gets funneled to the top. But eventually, as you start to get around here, right? That starts to slow down, it gets worse and worse, but this is where you start to see the beginning of a middle class, maybe, right? And then you get here, all the wealth is at the top, 
right? This is like industrial revolution for a country. But after that industrial revolution, all of a sudden, well, the plant that everybody's working in needs a plant manager. And that's not a nobility guy, right? All of a sudden you need a couple engineers, right? It, the plant gets bigger and all of a sudden you need a couple of women that are in working in human resources, right? To like solve issues, you need some accountants. All of a sudden you have this growth of the middle class. So as technology increases, income inequality starts to go down. So what you have is you have a two tiered system of nobility and peasants. Then you have an increase in inequality where the Gini coefficient, um, where the Gini coefficient grows. And then the Gini coefficient goes down. Now, the problem is that this is not the entirety of Kuznets curve. It appears that Kuznets curve does this and then eventually starts to get worse again. Well, what is that? That's corporate power and takeover of the state. That's what statism does. Statism, um, the ability to purchase regulation, the consolidation of wealth. This is once the middle class is burgeoning and all those wonderful things, we have free economics and we have competition. What ends up happening is in, people engage in regulatory capture. People engage in, um, they engage in, you know, buying off politicians in some regard, you know, the, the federal reserve and the state gets more power. And so there's like this inflation that increases. So the boom and bust economy is then controlled so that the super wealthy gain from a bust over time, but the poor lose so that the income inequality gets worse again. And it's not because that's the trend of capitalism, but that's what happens after the market economies fix the problem. The state steps in and we have this lean towards socialism and socialistic tendencies that so welfare, the, th the theft of the state, all of these things, they keep people in poverty at the same time that they make sure that large corporations are advantaged. Look at COVID lockdowns. It was the largest transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to the, to large corporations in all of American history. That's the socialism that changes Kuznets curve. So if you want to talk about wealth inequality, income inequality, innovation and technology, the answer is always free markets. But these things actually reduce that inequality and the systems of welfare and the systems of theft and the systems of socialism that you advocate, Hunter, are the things that actually increase income inequality. But you are correct that in developing nations, that income inequality gets worse because you have like you have the upper class and, and the lower class and like they gain all of the fucking wealth. Problem is, is in a true free market, um, they lose that shit in three generations. My guess is if you incorporate multiple technological innovations, this curve becomes a shine, a, a sine wave. Sine, but yeah. Sine, yeah, sorry, it's sine wave. I, I always want to say sin, even though sin is literally S-I-N. It's because it's the abbreviation in um, calculus. Mm -hmm. In cost tan. Not gonna lie. I, I didn't I I I hated calculus more than A Novas. That's how much I hated calculus. I did not like calculus either. I did calc one and calc two, and it was a fucking nightmare. Though it did help me understand economics better, to be honest. I did calculus in high school. I did him in undergrad. And then I did statistics in undergrad too. According to your worldview, poor people get shafted. Poor people no. don't get adequate access to protection from police. Thus, what's adequate? What does that even fucking mean? Right? Like, that's an arbitrary fucking measure. It's limiting their freedom, but wealthy people do. How does this make the world a better place? You're going through so many, yeah. you're jumping through so many hoops just to avoid acknowledging that taxation is necessary. No, no. What hoops did he jump through? What is he even talking about? I think you're no. you're uh, very keen on having everybody be equal, no in matter certain what. degrees on certain issues. Yes. Yeah, I I, I think that. I, you know what's really funny is that he's. It's it's like it's like. The the nineteen eighty four slavery is freedom. He's literally arguing that. Right? Like he's literally arguing that we should be enslaved to some capacity through taxation. And that's what freedom is. 
by his argumentation of positive rights. It's, it, it, it's actually fucking just, just, it, it's just, it's 1984 state propaganda, literally. I, I don't think that uh, is reasonable. So do you think, think that people should have equal access to cancer treatment? No, I think uh, people should have whatever they can voluntarily get. And that can so then the poor person doesn't get the cancer treatment, but the wealthy person does. Which cancer treatment? Experimental treatments that cost $20 million? Like, how far do you want to take this? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Should you deny the rich person from engaging in experimental treatments? How are we going to get that? Like, what are you talking about? Why don't they have the right to purchase for insane amounts of money experimental things that cost insane amounts of money? Yeah, I mean, and you already made the argument before. Uh, these experimental treatments eventually become common, mundane for the, the poors, quote unquote. Right. It's just stupid. No, that doesn't necessarily follow. You can ask for voluntary assistance. So you go and ask your poor friend to give you money for the cancer treatment? Or you could ask your rich friend, or you could do some kind of crowdsourcing thing. You know, I see people sometimes on Facebook raising money for for someone who's. You realize that's a money. fucking yeah. problem, dude. The fact that right now there's one group of people who can afford the nicest, best medical treatment in the entire planet, and then another group of people that can't and need to resort to Facebook GoFundMe pages to try and survive deadly ailments. I agree. That's why we need the state out of the system. I 110% agree because the state has made things absurdly expensive, raising insurance costs to absurd degrees um, because of that involvement. I 100% agree with you that it is a problem that people can't afford insurance. The first step I would do is making sure we can get rid of the Affordable Care Act since it's not affordable. Will you, will you support me since the data's in and the Affordable Care Act increased costs and didn't reduce them? We should go ahead and abolish it. The freer the market, the freer the people, right? Oh, no, no, no. You think that we should all be taxed and we should have shitty systems like they have in Canada and they have in the UK where it's actually more expensive and it's actually people more likely to die in waiting lists than you are today getting free services via bankruptcy and charity in America. Got it. Got it. I don't understand why you fucking hate poor people. Why do you want to kill them? Like at this point, this conversation is not worthy of anything other than just going hard and memeing on his dumb takes. You go for it, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's a fucking problem. I think people would be much better off if we had uh, freedom in, in, in the healthcare. You're industry. advocating Maybe for less freedom. Resort. There's less freedom in your worldview. No. In your worldview, no. poor people have less freedom because they're more likely to die. Poor people have less freedom because they don't have access to police the same way that rich people would. Uh, Hunter Avalon has me blocked everywhere because I didn't want to debate him on calling him a grifter a year ago. I was like, that's a dumb debate with you bringing up fucking drama and bullshit. Like, if he wants to unblock me and reach out to me, like debate something legitimate, as opposed to me just fucking memeing on him and hippy dippy rumble and calling him a fucking grifter and like, you will defend your position. How dare you sully my honor? It's like, dude, he's a fucking child. And I mean, they don't have a with the gloves, so to speak. Poor people have less freedom because they don't have access to police the same way that rich people would. And they don't have as good education, which hinders their ability to navigate the world and become successful later on in life. Your worldview reduces freedom. I love how he pays an editor, presumably, or maybe he does it himself. But I assume he pays an editor to go through and get rid of all the curse words for the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> and it's like, and you that don't see leftism as a problem. like. <laughs> It's like, like you, you're literally paying money to fix a problem created by your fucking ideology. I, I disagree. I think yours does. And I think you're working with the wrong definition of freedom. I, I don't think, think I'm working access. with the wrong definition of fucking human talking to you any longer. So can you like stop being so insane, please? Do you think you can do that? You think you can work on that one for me? What? <laughs> you, he thinks it's insane to challenge the idea of positive rights. The idea that you think freedom means any choice and that you think coercion means any environmental factor. There's only one group of people that think that and, and follow those thoughts through to logical conclusion. And they're called full blown communists. You think it's insane to argue that communism is wrong. If you think that then, you know, more power to you, but that's a dumb fucking take. 
are, are we dropping the civility now? Are you just going to go back to insults? Yeah, oh, I'm dropping civility now. Yeah, as soon as you say poor people don't really deserve the same care when it comes to cancer as rich people, yeah, you, you've lost the civility privilege, my friend. Did I say they, they don't deserve yeah, it? You can't then just call him your friend. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah. That's or the logical they, follow through won't. of what you've been saying this entire time. Your worldview is literally <laughs> fuck the poor and the rich get all the nice shit. Oh, that's a smear. Really? Your, but, your I mean, logical conclusion the, the, of your dipshit beliefs is a smear? Well, then that's kind of on you, buddy. And now you're going to dipshit. I mean, yes, you're, you're a dipshit these... fucking piece of garbage. You're a fucking subhuman sack of shit. All right. Well, if, if you're going to. Goodbye. Literally just. <laughs> he was saying goodbye, anyways. Also, does this guy, does Hunter Avalon ever at any point in time during this video say who this person is? Or does he just no. edit out everything? Well, let me, let me finish this up. Let me finish this up. Just, can we be civil when I say that the poors deserve nothing? Oh, okay. So the answer, the answer is no. The answer is at no, in, at no point does he actually say who this person is. He just tries to hide any traffic to him. That guy's Ronald definitely Reagan. going to uh, completely change his worldview now. Right. You just watched a clip from our Twitch channel, Fabian Liberty. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe here on YouTube, or go ahead and give us a follow on twitch.tv backslash Fabian Liberty.